Good evening, one and all. It's Friday. It is, of course, the end of the working week. And as you might tell from the background, or from because the stream says it is, today, today we're jumping onto Elite Dangerous. I always think there's a very interesting uh, loading screen that we have here, or at least menu screen, whatever you want to call it, for Elite Dangerous, because it's got this whole, oh god, horror, horror, evacuate, everything's going wrong. A place like a fraction universe, I get that there's someone going storyline with Elite Dangerous that that applies to, but it's never applied to where I'm docked. <laughs> so it's kind of curious that it keeps on putting this here, but as soon as I actually get into the game, it'll all be meaningless. My hair is once again screwing around, but it's the weather. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well where you are around the world. Hello there, I'm Drew. Hello, Caster. Hello there, Maggot Lord. Hello, Pipka. Hello, Adam Alec. Hello, Ladybug. Hello, Cosmo. Hope you're doing well. We're just chilling in space? Kind, I guess? <laughs> well, we should just be docked somewhere. Be dangerous as a story? Uh, th there is some kind of story or various stories going on in the background. It's not like a, uh, a campaign or series of quests that you go through. It's more just the universe has an evolving set of things happening. But uh, in a typical simulation drawn out fashion and uh, not in a way that I really wish to engage with too much, to be quite honest with you. Not really where I draw my attention to when it comes to really dangerous. I'm looking for story-based stuff. I'll go somewhere that has quests and just stories, rather than this uh, the drip feed and miss events and then whatnot. There. How much damage my sanity is the ash stuff done? Uh, quite a bit, Zom, and there is yet more to go. I've got lots of testing to do. Lots of testing to do. Uh, you've not seen Horizons before? So, have you seen Elite Dangerous pre-Horizons, or have you seen Odyssey as well, Marciatos? Trying to understand what you haven't seen, to be honest. Uh, and I say, I'm not used to being f not first placed on bits, but what you said about Twitch, I don't think I'll be a bit sleepy again for a long time. I mean, I understand, Ali. Ali, I really do understand on that. Uh, the tip feature does still come through as an announcement. You do get that on screen if you enjoy that bit there. Uh, should be. Should be a thing on the. Uh, Screen as well. I forget where I put it. It's been a while since I've actually looked at my Twitch from my <laughs> from the Switch side. Let me have a quick looky loo there. Actually, I, I want to see if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I put a panel up because I might have not, or it might have broken. These things happen. So let me just have a look at the front of it here. Panels, 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 panels. Uh, cheers and subs. Oh wait, no, yeah, the uh, stream elements leaderboard has cheers and subs, but it doesn't have tip on there. Curious, because it does go through them. They are the ones that do the uh, immediate processing there. Well, tell you what then. Tell you what, starting today, now I've just realised that. Uh, I'm going to put a leaderboard up there. Anyone who makes a tip, starting from today, going forwards, I will have a leaderboard on the panels at the bottom there. So there will be a record of it as well. That way you can still have your leaderboard. Without having to go through Twitch to have your leaderboard. How does that sound? Hmm. Because it is important. I want to make sure you are properly respected, thanked, put right at the top where you deserve to be. The amount of support that you give, because you are honestly an absolute legend, Addy. You really are. Right, well then, all of this aside, let's get in. Let's get in. Let's go to the open play because it's... why not? You know, if we bump into someone, that could be interesting. I highly doubt it, but it, you never know. Uh, what was the Ash stuff about? So, Ash is broken. Ash is broken in ways that so far I do not fully comprehend, but uh, everything you know about Ash's Blade Storm is currently wrong. And I wish that was an exaggeration, but it really isn't. It really isn't. Back off, motorcyclist. Uh, for example, I uh, did a setup where Exogoxad, uh, Gunner, uh, sorry, Exogoxa Pilots, whatever it is, the, the heavy gunner but Exo Railjack version. Hit them with the uh, Blade Storm with an unmodded melee. And after all the damage ticks had gone through, the slash had procced all the way down as far as it could. Uh, the damage left them on the. I think it was on the U of. No, sorry, on the uh, ER of Officer or whatever it is. It was, it was a little bit into their name going down the health bar, but not much. When I changed the mods, when I put on mods, but those mods I put on were all mods that do not affect Bladestorm, according to me, literally the video I've done on this. 
Once I did all of that, the ability one-shot the Exogoxan officer before any slash blocks even happened. One shot. And I can tell you, there is no way <laughs> that the mods I tested there were working when I tested this previously, I would have noticed. Something really screwy is going on. And I don't know how long it's been there either. Uh, I'd like to say, funny how Twitch uh, said they bought by the red policy due to create a backlash. We ignore all the other bullcrap changes made at the same time. Yeah, I am increasing on the side of that being a distraction, Daitai. Increasingly on the side of being a distraction, which makes it even worse. The fact that they put out that uh, thing so big, and it was so expressly worded, not just in the policy, but also in the terms and conditions. Oh, sorry, terms of service. Uh, then they walk back the policy by saying, oh, no, no, we're not doing that, sorry, let's get rid of the guidelines. How bad on that? We made a mistake. It's bad for you, bad for us. They said bad for Twitch. Literally, they said in their tweet, it, what they did was bad for Twitch. And then, to follow up on that, when it's called out, but you've still got it in the terms of service, they then updated that to make it clear, oh, no, we intended for it only to be about this thing, not about you guys, it's fine, it's fine, you're okay. It's only about this other very specific thing which we could have called out from the start, had we intended to. And then everything else that they've done has been mostly not talked about. And I just... Yeah, it's impressive. It does feel like a dead cat strategy, a distraction. And I'm not the only one saying this. This was, uh, yeah, this was being said by, I would say, Zach Bussey, who is a uh, pretty well-known reporter on social media uh, ongoing, including about Twitch's stuff. He was the one who uh, really brought to light the Twitch changes and went, uh, <laughs> what the hell is this? That His uh, observations of that really made the rounds. And the various others, leaders in the industry, as it were, which I mean as well, going, this is not good in any way whatsoever. So yeah, Twitch is screwing around, and uh, I'm watching over the coming weeks to see what else do they do, if else. What and if else. Stark reminder, Twitch is owned by Amazon. So, you know, that's a thing. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Right, that aside, let's look at the good stuff. Do my key keybinds work. That's problematic. Okay, so, since I last played this game, my hard drive died, and so I've had to reinstall basically everything, and I keep forgetting which keybinds are kept on the drive, which keybinds are kept on the game, and it appears that this might be one that's kept on the drive. Oh, I love to... <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear, well, the very first thing I need to get to then is... Where is it? Jetson or Cargo, good that is empty. Alright. Jetson or Cargo is unbound. I don't know why that is a button by default. I don't, why, don't know why. But Jetson or Cargo is a thing you can do, and when this game came out at the very least, it had a default easy to hit button. It was just some letter on the keyboard. It's like, why would you do that? Especially when jettisoning your cargo in some areas of the game is illegal and will get you shot. So you'll not only lose your cargo, you'll then also lose your ship and get fined out the ass for doing it. <laughs> I don't know why that was ever a thing. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, as I say, funny spot, you scale off one thing attack speed, but most of the statistics scale off way more. Now Blaze Storm scales off way more than most statistics. Condition overload and fashion commands, almost no other statistics can use. I haven't even tested condition overloaders yet, Zom, yeah. I haven't even tested that. Also, Zom, um, and this actually goes out to everyone who plays Warframe. Uh, when did Rapiers stop proccing Slash on finishers? Because that, that was the whole thing about Rapiers. You do a stealth finisher, a frontal back finisher, you proc slash. But I tried testing that today and it wasn't proccing slash, both in the Sigma Macrum and in missions. Whether I killed the target or didn't kill the target, I tested on and off steel path to verify that. And it w wasn't proccing slash on the finisher. And that wasn't even when holding it with Ash. I was using Loki to take out even that as well and it still wasn't happening. 
But <laughs> but when I used the war, I was proccing impact. Which I also didn't know it did. <laughs> What's going on in the world? Everything is confusing me. It's really quite something. So yes, I'm losing my sanity again, Zom. Thank you for bringing uh, yet another absolute insanity to my attention. Right, I need to remember what I need. First things first, I want the galaxy map button. Uh, gal open galaxy map. Nope. Okay. Uh, interface mode. Nope. Uh, I thought it'd been. What's what's where's where's the button for open galaxy map? Okay, chat. This this could be uh, this could be a thing. Is it in here? Ah, uh, do, 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 do. Miss. Nope. There's a thing for weapon and engine color, but uh, see, this is why Warframe has a search field because <laughs> there's just so many goddamn settings. Ah, uh, mode switches. Ah. Here we are. Open galaxy map. Currently bound to nothing. Don't know how that was ever supposed to help anyone. There we go. Open system map. There we go. Right then. Those are some basics. Uh, flight throttle. So, yeah, but what is all this? Set speed to maximum. Set speed to 75. No. 50%. We'll do it on that one. Yeah. And set speed to full reverse. There we go. Those are using some side buttons there. Okay, that should be good enough for now. This is what also why I use default settings for most things in most games, because then if something breaks, I can just get back into it mostly without having to worry. Uh, is it all rapiers or that one specific one? Well, I haven't tested beyond uh, Distress of Prime at the moment, so it might just be that one. It might be all of them. I don't know. Sorry. Oh, what else do I need to check? You know what? I'll figure it as we go. It'll probably get me killed for it as I go, but... Wait, no, hang on. Uh, targeting, is that in here? No, it's going to be... Targeting is going to be in ship controls. Yep, targeting. Right, target head, T. Yep, that's normal. Target next, G. Target highest, H. Yep, that's fine. Okie dokie. You know what, let's make ta previous shift, G. That should work. Yep, okie dokie. Target system is Y. Yep, muscle memory says that's correct. Cool. Primary, secondary, next. Yep, that's all fine. Hello, Ray. This should be fine. I, I think... Oh, I was trying to scanning stuff. I really should. Yeah, yeah. Uh... That looks correct slash normal. Probably. Yes. Maybe. Uh, feels... Yep, 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 yep. Probably okay. I don't know what the sensitivity is going to be like. We'll discover that one together. But I don't want to be in the setting screen for the next two hours trying to figure it all out. Right. Okay. Shall I figure it quickly if I press the wrong button? Yeah, why don't I just... Alright then, let's see. Fire groups and then modules, 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 modules. Thruster shield gen, multi-can, life support, fuel scoop. Fuel scoop is a 4A. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, we've got passenger to super screws assist. Good sensors, which are seriously upgraded, which is good. we got DSS, planetary approach, discovery scanner. It looks like I've got everything I need there. Looks like. <laughs> Maybe. Hopefully. Uh, we're in the system of Amicus. Yep, that's fine. Oh, the faction. The Democrats are at a civil war. Oh, that's horrible. I don't know what happened to that. I'm certainly the person who was supported and didn't leave for months. Nope. Don't know what that's about. Yeah, so we got heat sinks. We've got shield booster. Lightweight. Thrusters. Upgraded with... Drive strengthening. Sure. Sounds like it's a good thing. Frameshift drive, which is upgraded. Ooh, upgrade five. I've done some work on this one, apparently. Thank you, me, from the past. Uh, power distributor, grade one. Okay, well, fair enough. I upgraded it. 
Sensors, long range scanners, sounds good to me. Optional internal shield jenny is three pips, that'll do. DSS, five. Nice. Good, 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 good. I have done some work there. Ah, uh, that should be everything I need. Probably. Like, you know, you'd imagine. Oh, and, uh, vehicle bay. Yep, I do have a scarab. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's make sure there's nothing I need to sell. This is all from very local areas, so I don't need to think about it. Apparently, got two million credits worth of stuff. Okay, fair enough. Let's travel. Now, when I open the map, it actually opens the map, which is beautiful. Oh, God, what's this? Bargoid War? I don't want any part of it. No, I. We're exploring. Go away. Crazy alien stuff. Ah. Okay. So. Question is, chat, where do I go? Because, I mean, I can go over that way, I can go over that way, and that way, that way. It's, it's literally the three dimensions of space. We can see markers galore for all of space just kind of having fun in the uh, the human world, as it were. All of inhabited space just kind of losing his mind. I could go in that direction, but that's where everyone's going when they explore. So that just seems a bit crap. So what I could do is aim in a direction that doesn't look like anyone else would probably want to go. Where looks like no one would go. I think if I swing this around get Polaris on the opposite side from me, I'll be heading straight away from Polaris, which should be straight away from where anyone might be going in that direction. That could be good, right? So we're nice stuff to look at. We'll find nice stuff to look at, which no matter which way we go, I'm sure of that much. All I need to do is pick a route that goes somewhere interesting. If I route myself down that way, that should be good. So what I'm going to do is route settings. Let's go for fastest routes for a bit. Oh, I just lost my thing. Let's see, how far out is that? That is 834 light years. 19 jumps. If I take those jumps out there, uh, apparently that's not going to be affordable. When do I run out of fuel? Oh, yikes. I'm going to have to do a lot of fueling, it seems. Okay. But yeah, if I take that kind of route, jump that far out and then take it from there, that should be out of the beaten path. Because what I want to do is go somewhere that other people haven't been. Uh, what actually is a Colsack? A uh, Colsack Nebula. Colsack Nebula, that's what that is. So yeah, this is a fuel star apparently. Uh, it's an M-type, so that'll be fine for scooping. Yeah. So, Scraby Gravy. Two things. One, I want to go find somewhere that has not been found before. Two, I want to explore by scanning said areas, bringing back the data, and because no one else has been there, I get more value from it. That's the idea. To do that, I'm looking out into space and going, where do I think other people haven't been? And then I'm trying to find out how I can get there as quickly as possible. And then I continue to explore in a more efficient route once I'm there. So I think if I do this, this should be good. Don't know what all that was. I'll just ignore that. I'm sure we don't have to worry about the fact that there is a war ongoing at this station. We'll just jet off into the distance and be like, la 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 la. Do not mind me. Good, that button still works. Media hatch confirmed. Regulate speed until outside the exclusion zone. That was loud that I remember. I will have to fix that. Hi, right. Let's take the landing gear off. That is a lot louder than I remember. Okay, let's allow ourselves to drift for a moment here and sort the audio. Right, yes, everything is at max. Right, well, let's just quickly drop that down, shall we? Uh, keep sound effects up a little bit, but the rest can... Yeah. Okay. That's better. 
let's do a boost. Much, much better. There we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, I thought saying good looking game, comfortable, uh, will be dangerous as UI. Wait for some time in 15 till the return. You might have to look at a neutron star highway to get out of that far from the me for time frame. Ah. You see, I have this little thing called spare time. I can do a bit of jumping. Also, my ship isn't uh, crap, so I can do a decent amount of jumping pretty easily. I right, look at this. This is 47 light years in a single hop, and I'm just going off in the distance. Hmm. Charging up. We'll be jumping in. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Because she says engage sooner than you actually go. There we are. Alright then. Let's do a quick little scoop around the star here. Because we need to line up for the next place, and also you can see I'm gathering fuel whilst doing this. Which is very nifty. Didn't fill the tank, but I don't need to. Every time I do that, I extend the distance I can travel just a little bit further, really. Now, the next system we're jumping to is apparently still in the Federation, so we'll definitely need to keep going. Imagine combining Elite Dangerous with Warframe. That sounds horrible. Elite Dangerous, why is an ocean deep as a body? Oh, sure, there's some depth to it, but, uh, yeah. I don't see how Warframe would be a suitable addition to a galaxy-wide uh, space trucking simulator. But like saying, hey, imagine crossing uh, football with Apex Legends. But like, okay, cool. What's that going to look like? Because those are two very different things. Truly competitive games. That's about it. And get. Always make sure I get out of scooping of a star before I hit the jump, because otherwise I might cook my ship just a little bit. You know, stars are hot. Stars are a little bit hot. Which football? Uh, the car soccer kind. Railjack has its bugs, doesn't it? But Elite Dangerous isn't trying to be Railjack, and Railjack isn't trying to be Elite Dangerous, so at least we got that going for us. Uh, it's coming up with a whole load of discoveries. Those are just passive things being identified as we're coming through. We don't need to worry about those. Those are nothing important, nothing valuable. Alright, so this next system we're jumping to is recognised as an anarchy system and it has no information about it whatsoever, so this is saying that we are getting out of uh, inhabited space, most likely, which is what we need. Oh, how long did you brew it for, Marcitos? How long have you brewed it for? Am I having fun getting yeeted by a sun? I'm not getting yeeted by a sun. It is nice to travel. You think 10 minutes? 10 minutes is okay. It's it's going to be a strong brew, but 10 minutes is okay. You're fine. When you leave a tea to brew for a very long time, it's referred to as a builder's brew. You'll be fine. It'll just be a uh, bit more bitter, a bit thicker. Not physically thicker, but uh, the taste will be... Well, you, you'll notice the difference. <laughs> it won't be anywhere near as smooth. Yeah, Elite Dangerous and Warframe definitely do both have grinds down, don't they? In fact, a lot of the games I play have grinds down, so uh, maybe that says more about me. I don't know. I played far too much of MMOs. 
Right. We still haven't got to the end of our route. And as I continuously pick up a bit of fuel every jump, I uh, shouldn't need to be fueling along the way. Like, stop proper for fuel. If I have a look at the uh, route planner here, it's saying another 14 jumps to go. Fuel and it's got a fuel star eight. there. A few jumps out. So let's see. Does it tell me how many jumps it is to that one? Uh, I don't think it does. Yeah, we got 14 jumps to go. Let's see what happens. See if we do actually need a fuel star along the way. Corvette grind is worse than anything in Warframe. I mean, fair. It, it, it's a long process upwards. Warframe is a lot more sideways rather than upwards. Uh, you don't have to grind for Equinox to be able to grind for Frontier. That kind of thing. You're very right, Cosmo. You are very right. I mean, it's perfectly fine for a game to have hundreds, even thousands of hours of uh, repetitive or at least repeated gameplay available. I mean, that's the core principle of things like your shooters, right? Multiplayer shooters, you literally doing the same thing over and over. That's fine. That's actually completely fine. So long as the actual gameplay loops are worthwhile. That's where a lot of your grinds can fall apart. Hero Clipper? There do you are. Uh, I've not gone for some of the top end ships. The largest ship I have uh, actually flown in this game so far has been a Python. And to be quite honest with you, I'm, I was satisfied with that. I didn't find myself with much of a need to go further for the things I was trying to accomplish. Sure, yeah, I could work up to an Anaconda or go into pretty crazy uh, Federal and Imperial ships and whatnot. I just didn't have the vibe for it. And at the end of the day, we play games to have fun. So if you're not seeing the fun, if you're not seeing the path, just don't bloody do it. Something tells me Battlefield Rage is being a bit sarcastic, say. I like my cash rewards in the circuit steel path. Hmm, okay. Hello there, role model. How are you doing? Yeah, that's another common thing with uh, MMOs, any kind of grind-based game that's constantly updated, is that the grind constantly gets smaller over time to compensate for the bigger grinds created on top of it. Which is always a bit weird. Hmm. Good old feature creep. The alerts are more framing for a fully built former. Uh, what kind of alert is it? Because if it's defense, I'll skip that. I ain't doing five or ten waves of defense just for one former. Certainly not if it's on the corporate ship dial set. Well, kill. Mobile defense? Uh, okay, that's, that's more passable. Passable. It's a single build former, it's really not that big of a deal to me. <laughs> when you can get a pack of three former for 35 platinum, a single one isn't. Eh. Three former? But it's not free former, it's work for a former, because everything in Warframe is free. At least everything in terms of mechanical stuff. Obviously, uh, cosmetics, some of them you can't just farm. But, like, otherwise, broadly speaking, everything is free in Warframe. It's all about the time and the enjoyment. And uh, let me tell you, I do not enjoy the corporate ship defense. Nope. Not even five waves of that. Thank you very much. Hello, Predator Queen. How you doing? One of the issues with mobile defense is that uh, most mobile defense missions don't actually have any reward. You don't get huge swarms of enemies quite to the same extent you do on survival. You've got downtime in moving from A to B with not really any reason to worry about the downtime or enjoy the downtime. You're just literally moving A to B. Uh, <laughs> uh, the actual mission reward itself is nothing. You get a tiny amount of objective affinity, and that's it. Actually, kind of surprising how uh, how nothing mobile defense is. 
capture is almost the same too, but at least capture is really quick. And then because there's a capture mission in the void, you got value. Who runs captures outside of the void? Like, actually runs them. Doesn't do it once or twice here or there, but runs captures outside the void. It's, uh, three years of that. Yeah, Hijack, as uh, Labour points out, is another one that doesn't have any proper rewards. Famous Corrupted Mod Capture Farms. So there you're not farming Capture, you're farming the Corrupted Mods, the Oregon Bolts. Capture just happens to be the quickest vehicle to do it. Has it been Chaos yet? Uh, there was a Chaos on the menu screen, but I'm avoiding the Chaos. Today we're exploring, Red Queen. We're exploring. I'm just taking myself nice and far out of the, uh, the bubble. A few hundred light years out, so that I can hopefully find stuff that no one else has been digging around in. Alright, so it's not X-Jump, no Fuel Star, that's fine. We'll just pass through, I've got plenty of fuel. How's it looking at the moment? Uh, yeah, still need to stop somewhere along the way if we don't get more fuel into here. I mean, Muggle Defense Endless Chocodica just sounds like defense, to be honest. Literally just sounds like defense. How far am I from Bubble? Only a few hundred light years at the moment. We're taking a bit of distance out to find somewhere to start and then take it from there. And if it turns out that where I'm starting from is a discovered area, I'll just yeet myself out of another few hundred. So yeah, just very leisurely taking us into the black. Alright, fuel star on the next one as well, so that's good. We're into 20 light year jump range with maxed out Anaconda Guardian T5 and Neutron Boost. That's a lot. Neutron Boost doing a lot of the work there. Most likely won't find anything new for another couple hundred light years. But that's why I'm still going another couple hundred. I aimed for something that was about a thousand outside of where I was living, and I was already living on the edge of the bubble. So, after a thousand, I should be somewhere interesting. That's the idea. We can see that every single star I jump to, the next star is basically on the other side of the star. I'm moving in pretty much a straight line with each jump. So with each jump being just shy of uh, 50 light years, I'm making a bit of distance. I'm making a bit of distance. Yeah, I figured it's a highly specialised ship. I haven't got, uh, what's it, Guardian Engineering on here. I've got T5, I think, on my uh, frameshift drive, so I'm going a pretty distance. I think it was T5, wasn't it? I thought it was. I'm going to bring distance in this ship here. Uh, what one is this one? I've got a... Uh... What's my ship? <laughs> What's my ship? What is it? Diamondback Explorer. I saw it there for a second before it closed away from me. Diamondback Explorer. There we are. DBX. Oh, that is a very red star. Imagine hijack with Nidus. No operator? Um, how do you mean, Jock? How do you mean? Soft lock? It's not a soft lock. Why do you think it's a soft lock? If you think because Nidus has no shields, no. Uh, both Nidus and uh, Inaros use their health to shields for hijack. So actually, United is pretty good on uh, hijack. I'm sorry to hear that, Brother Queen. Yeah, 
Yeah, fair enough, fair enough, yeah. I, again, didn't engage with the hardest of grinds thrown into this game. Because it didn't appeal to me. I've done... Ex oh god, what's struggling the ship? Ugh. Something uh, was nasty on the gravity well. Alright, anyway. Uh, I've done dedicated rough grinds on games before now, like really rough. And uh, most times it just wasn't worth it. Quite frankly, most times it wasn't worth it. Ruined a lot of people's enjoyment to pretty space truck simulator. I'd imagine so, yes. Uh, like I said earlier, Elite Dangerous, wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. And certainly in the early days of any bit of content added, that puddle depth was rather thin. The rain does not pour in this universe. So look for the fun where it exists. Don't overdo it. Alright, I'm going to slow down here. My fuel is getting a bit low, so I'm going to treat this as a fuel star. Let's take the opportunity. Fill the tanks. I'm just very gently going past the star here. Take it in as much hydrogen as I can. Filling up the tanks, ready to uh, continue on. And at 343 kilos per second, that's pretty good going. And you can see it actively filling up the bar there. But yeah, to give you guys an example of the grinds that I have done, like for example, uh, well, oh, slightly overcooking myself there. Fair enough. That's uh, okay. You're all right. The ship does not handle that amount of fuel at once. That's fine. What do you mean I'm getting hot, play? <laughs> Uh, real question, is there a quick way to get quick thinking about buying one? I can't remember where you found it from, sorry Dai Dai. Uh, so you'll have to check the rates on that. The wiki will be the best place to see where to get it from and if it's worth it to you. But yeah, uh, grindiest of all games I've ever been on was of course RuneScape and that one, well I got Maxscape twice over. Got it, then they brought out a new skill so I slammed home that one and knocked it out in like week or two tops. And that wasn't even the most dedicated grind to it, but just getting it done. Let's again slow down and do some more scoopy scoops here. I should bring myself in a bit closer, I want to get the full value out of that. Set the full value, come on. Bring us in, there we go, 343, three. perfect. Yeah, RuneScape's got a heck of a lot of <laughs> to uh, getting those levels, and a lot of that work was done prior to some of the more recent additions as well, so uh, things like maxing out magic and crafting, a few of skills besides, way, way, way back in the past. Make sure to use my heat sink. I don't need to use it this early on. I definitely don't need to use it this early on. I saved that or if I suddenly jump into the middle of a few different styles at once and I go, ah, and die. But yes, I'm aware of heat sinks. This is not my first foray into the black. Yeah, it sounds good, Malasotos. You enjoy your tea. Right, let's recheck on that route. We are number three jumps to go, and you'll notice, yep, we are fully fueled to go all the way now. That's good. Once we get out there, I'll check it out. Better queen. Cheers. Huh. Yeah, like for example with uh, RuneScape, I got Dungeoneering to 99 almost entirely solo, and then more levels beyond that. Little bits here and there done with others, but mostly solo. Uh, it was completely solo from 0 to 75, so you know, consider that. 
Uh, I have an absurdly high farming, but part, most of that comes down to the fact that Rinscape added in a ridiculously good farming spot for a while. So that doesn't really count. But yeah, it, it's a grind. No matter which one you think of, which skill, it's a grind. Kind of crazy that Max Capes became something of a standard in that game. It's insane. And so much of it became AFK as well. Like, I remember back in the days of RuneScape, the grind wasn't as much of a concern because, hey, a lot of stuff was focused on mid, mid to higher level content. Focused on your mini games, focused on people dicking around in pest control and uh, castle wars. But you could actually find people in places other than just if they were directed to it. Getting more modern RuneScape. There's so much talk about, oh, but is a skill AFKable? That pains me. That genuinely pains me. To hear people asking for AFKable skills. To be able to have it open on their phone whilst they're at work and just tap once every five minutes to continue. To continue letting the number climb. I'm just like. Why? Why would anyone want that? Where's the gameplay? Christ on a bike! Is your DJ uh, deactivated for the stream? It is. Yes, I like the ambiance of uh, Elite Dangerous. I might turn up the uh, in-game music a little bit actually, because it's very quiet at the moment. Let's uh, drop out of that a sec. So why's the screw of us? Uh, music, bring it up. Wait, no. Escape apparently isn't X in save, it's X in cancel, whatever. There we are. Yeah, we're sticking with the uh, EDR beyonds. Exactly, Cosmo, yeah. And this thing is it. Th there's the ancient phrase gamers will optimize the fun out of games. And that's what AFK gaming really is the pinnacle of. Of I want to have this thing. I want to get there as fast as possible, but with the least amount of. I misjudged how loud different parts of the ambience could be. Eh? <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, let's just get ourselves a bit away from the star and recollect our thoughts, shall we? Uh, yeah, but people want to get to whatever new thing as quickly as possible, with as little uh, risk as possible, with as little hassle as possible, with as little interaction as possible, especially, especially if the thing that they need to do to get there, they're just not interested in. And that's a crying shame. Like, if, uh, to, to take an example, you've got the Max Cape RuneScape. Why would you care about the Max Cape? Because the Max Cape has uh, benefits well beyond any other cape uh, below its tier, as it were. There are some more uh, difficult capes to get, which do even bigger and bolder things, but the step is the Max Cape. The capes below it, oh yeah, there's some powerful capes there, but they're not the Max Cape. And the problem with that, then, is that it's a serious jump. Uh, to give you an example, the skill cape you get for getting level 99 in Dungeoneering, it gives you the ability to teleport to every single resource dungeon that you have unlocked throughout RuneScape, which is brilliant! I love that cape! That was an amazing cape to have. There is uh, other perks you can get on other skill capes, but only whilst you're wearing it. What you can do then with the max cape is put two capes on one. So you get the benefits of, say, the Dungeoning one and the Slayer one simultaneously. Whoa, hey, Literally twice the power. It also has higher stats. But to do that, you have to max out every other skill. And it's just like... For everyone who doesn't enjoy uh, woodcutting, who enjoy, enjoy fishing, well, they have to go and do it. Even though they'll never do anything related to that again, or at least aren't intending to, it's just there. And so that becomes a new grind that players have to overcome 
becomes a new best in slot, and then things become geared towards alleviating that grind or making that grind more accessible, and then you get AFK Gaming. Rather than, hmm, maybe this isn't something we should probably drive people towards. Because if people are grinding, they're paying for boosts and membership and whatnot, and it makes money. Yeah, gaming's a uh, very volatile industry in various ways. Anyway, we are in deep space. What I want to see is if this space is so deep that no one has been here before. That is the question. So, let me remember the button. Is it this one? Oh my god, I got it first time. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, where's my mouse gone? Well, am I supposed to... It's space. Why would I not use my mouse for this bit? Whatever. So we don't need to read that nerd stuff. Uh, what I'm going to need to do here is we need to, first of all, honk. And with that... We now have ourselves a system scan, and it shows that there's actually nothing really we need to look at here. Well, that's a bit pants. Bloomin' typical. The first place I find is bit pants, but that's fine. Let's have a quick looky loo. Uh, not what I wanted. I want this one. Does it tell me if anyone has discovered this before? Yes. First discovered by V's. Okay. Curse you, V's! Right, so I'm going to need to go further out. We don't need to go further out. Uh, Dice I say, isn't those granny features the bonus feature for completionist's sake? Uh, Dice I in RuneScape, no. Because the skills also have things along the way, things that you can unlock and things that you can do if you want to interact with that side of thing. But with RuneScape, a lot of it is literally just kind of click and wait. A lot of it is hurry up and wait. That's how so much of it was designed. In the earlier levels, there's a lot more kind of interaction. Certainly in the earlier years, there was a lot more involvement in it, a lot more of a game. But things didn't quite scale right. Yeah. Not bees, V's. Victor Echo, Echo Sierra. Yeah. Uh, if that's it, what I understand, things have changed drastically these days. You can trade up by skill injectors, max rank abilities, with real money transactions. You must be on about EVE Online. You must be on about EVE Online, which yes, you can uh, buy skill injectors in EVE Online to get skills. EVE was different in that you passively leveled skills. There was no active leveling whatsoever in the past. Which was both a positive and a negative. It meant that you could never catch up to someone who started before you, technically. But it also meant that no matter how much you played the game, you always had a progression of skills. And again, it becomes a question as to what progression is required. Why should there be a progression? Th those kinds of questions start happening. Alright, so let's go out this way a bit. And let's drop... Let's th no, let's not drop. Let's go up. A lot of people I expect will drop. So I'm going to go upwards. So this one here. There we go. That is a distance of... Is that only 198 light years? Oh, I might need to go a bit further. So, this one here. 358 light years. That should maybe give us enough distance out. We'll see. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very familiar with the... Uh, the time grinds and the injector stuff and whatnot with EVE Online. I've lost track with uh, various parts of the industry and whatnot. I've been out of EVE Online for uh, years at this point. On the Discord, one of the moderators, we've got uh, Quintus. They do play EVE Online, so if you want to talk to someone about it, that would be other person for at least uh, modern EVE. But yeah, again, typical MMO stuff of the sooner you're in, Leveling up process, it just makes your character more effective in certain ways, even also with its uh, absolute no hand holding PvP kind of stuff. So uh, it can be ruthless in all kinds of ways. So on and so forth. Some positives, some negatives, and some very, 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 very questionable balance decisions made. I, pl I had a lot of fun on Eve, I did. But, uh,. I don't know that it respects your time. You know, if I if I got a, p a pound 
If I got a pound for every time someone came into an Elite Dangerous stream and joked about if it's the new Railjack, I mean, I'd be able to get myself some very nice mugs. I'd be able to get quite a few. Uh, 2014 16 was the last time you prodded Eve. Let me think. Timelines 2014. Uh, 2014, that was. Then, uh, interesting, yeah. 2016 was definitely on the downward trend there for my interest in it. Uh, 2014, yeah, tw I think 2013, 2014 was kind of like my peak enjoyment with Eve Online. That was probably the peak of it for me. If I'm remembering my timelines correctly, I might not be. I think I am, yeah, yeah. I started with Eva Line with the Crucible expansion, and that did a lot of good for the game. Like, the game was in a good spot when I joined. Uh, there were ups and downs and weird choices. But, uh, yeah, it's been a. There were some poor choices, and what really summed up the poor choices for me is when, at one point, I dipped my toes back into Eve, seeing how it was going. I had a ship which was specialised in. Uh, hauling through dangerous circumstances. I believe it's called a, uh, a deep space transport. It, it was very, very good at its job, and I was very good at my job. I had managed to uh, defeat traps and ganks and scammers multiple times over. I was good at my job. I was good at my role there. I knew what to do. And I was doing this in low sec, not uh, null sec. Null sec is very different. That would have been bad for me. So here I was, uh, taking on risky looking hauling job through low sec. It would be risky if he didn't have the gear I had. The gear I had, at least the uh, couple years prior that I'd done it plenty, I'd have been fine. Well, turns out that uh, CCB Games had made some serious changes to how capital ships worked. And despite the fact that a capital ship is absolutely not supposed to be the kind of ship that can intercept a sneaky, quick little hauler. I jump into a star system, someone lights a Sino, instantly drops in their uh, capital ship. Bear in mind, I'm already trying to get out of there. In the time it takes me to try to get out of there, the capital ship has loaded in, deployed fighters, disrupted my cloaking abilities, warp scrambled me so strong even my ship couldn't get out, which was designed to escape even if someone latched onto me. One ship, or one player with one ship plus a Sino ship, which do we really count that as part of it, was able to completely shut me down with absolutely no recourse whatsoever, nothing I could do. And I just, uh, I was like, sorry, what the hell happened to the balance here? What the hell happened to the balance on that one? I had to wonder. where a capital ship was doing literally all of the jobs at once. So decloaking, of uh, locking down the warp drive, and of dealing massive amounts of damage. Faction scram this wasn't faction scram. I was scrambled by the fighters, Ithar. I was scrambled by the fighters from the capital ship. The ship didn't need to lock onto me. The fighters did. Not weather fighters, warp scrambling fighters. Warp scrambling fighters. The capital ship jumped in, threw fighters at me so quickly that it disrupted my cloak. I had gone invisible. I had cloaked. They manually sent their fighters in my direction quickly enough, somehow, to disrupt my cloak before I was able to warp out, to then lock onto me with the fighters, to then warp scramble me in a ship designed to run through blockades. One ship. That's why I knew the balance was completely and utterly dead. That was ridiculous. And I had a lot of experience at hauling. A heck of a lot in me. I've been mean, on the side of uh, hauling casually, hauling in uh, dangerous spaces. High sec, low sec, null sec, wormhole space. 
I have supported haulers, I have hunted haulers. Whole shebang. Have I played Elite Dangerous? I played an amount of it, yeah. I played an amount of it. Uh, it was voted for by the supporters of the channel. To be on stream again here. Because in case you're not aware, anyone who is a supporter of the channel, so if you're a Twitch subscriber, a YouTube member, or if you are a, uh, what's it? A Patreon patron. Any one of those at any level gives you access to the Supporters Tea Lounge and the Variety Friday poll, which allows you to vote on what game we have on Fridays. And the way the votes work, if your vote doesn't get picked that week, then it carries through to the next week, cumulatively. So, eventually, whatever you vote for, if you keep voting for it, will get picked. So everyone gets to have their bit. Obviously, the more popular ones happen more often. Elite Dangerous has finally come around again. I've been all over EVE Online, just like I've been all over RuneScape, I've been very sparsely dangerous, all over Warframe, let's face it, as well. I certainly do give games a fair runaround, until I reach the point where I go, I don't want to interact with that, I'm good thanks. I've dabbled. That's enough for me. And it's understanding and appreciating that, uh, Either things change or you change, you reach a point where you go, right, cool, I'm Alrighty, done, thanks. Ken, grab your party hat, we're about to sing happy birthday. Oh, I am so sorry, Esprit, I meant to actually go get a party hat, I completely forgot today with heat. I am so sorry, Esprit. Happy birthday, Esprit, though, and thank you very much for subscribing at Tier 2 on to 20 months. 20. That is a lot. Happy birthday, Esprit, and thank you very much for continuing your subscription over here. I'm so sorry I forgot a party hat though. Um, do I have. This ain't gonna be a party hat, but it'll look equally ridiculous. Will that count? <laughs> a bubble wrap hat. It wasn't large enough. It wasn't going to fit. <laughs> Corpus fashion right there. Yup. It's it's uh, it's the silliest you're going to get, Esprit. I hope that was worth it. <laughs> It works. I'm glad. Happy birthday, my bit rival. Adam Alec, thank you very much for the 100 bits as well. Continuing the happy birthdays there to Esprit. Bubble wrap up every time it's someone's birthday, we pop a bubble. <laughs> That's a thing, isn't it? Oh dear, dear, dear. I should probably move that. It might confuse the cat. So. Yeah. Just kind of gently scoop around the star. Let me just. Park us in a scooping trajectory. Let me move this so I don't annoy the cat. There we are. Out of way now. Now she won't have to get hissy about that when she does her inspections. They would say I'd draw Ken in a party hat, but I don't know if here's a drawing of another guy as a good birthday gift. <laughs> hmm. Maybe not, Ladybug. Also, Ladybug, didn't you say that you had a uh, screenshot featured on Prime Time? I think you mentioned that in the uh, Achievements channel, right? Or am I misremembering? Find me misremembering. We had five of them featured. Ooh. I must apologize. I missed that. Like, whenever it happened, I missed that one. All those five. We love to see. Ooh. We have arrived. You're never going to miss it when you arrive at your destination, are you? 
a little jingle with that. System scan complete. Oh, this is another crappy system. System fully scanned, yada yada yada. Okay, let's have a look at the system information. Has someone found this? Damn it! Domin Terranian. We'll have to go further. It's a different name, so we're on someone else's route. But we're just going to have to go further. Okay. Let's go... Let's let's take a dog leg now. Because we've been going in a straight line this way. Now, people do love going in straight lines. So, what I'm going to do now is go in... That direction. Magical. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday to us, free <laughs> happy birthday to me. I don't think the bot has quite got the tone right there, Esprit. Let me try that again for you. Happy birthday, dear Esprit. Happy birthday, dear Esprit. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Esprit. How's that? Thank you very much for the 500 bits, Esprit. Hmm. Oh. Cheers indeed. Uh, I thought I said you need to go at least 10,000 light years away from the bubble to get anything new. I doubt that. I doubt that. Been after the last time I went out. Alright, let's see. This is uh, 185. Let's go further out. We could do some good jumping. 351. Let's go further. 300. There we go. Let's try that. Addy, next time it comes around then, I will make a proper exception for you. Next time it comes around. That said, I do believe that sometimes so it's, uh, well, unless someone makes it clear they're wanting a birthday song, I don't want to like overdo it for people. Esprit literally made the bots sing happy birthday, or at least attempt to sing it. So uh, I'm going to be a bit more on the nose. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it counts as self-promotion or just from welcome bragging to put in the server, but if anyone wants to see the prime time thing, give me out on Discord. No, Ladybug, you can absolutely post that. Uh, if it's Warframe screenshots, pop it into Warframe main. If it's fashion, pop it in the fashion one instead. But Ladybug, you have my explicit permission to post that, absolutely. That is a bright hot star right there. We all just kind of skid along the edge of that one. That is a big star. I am going quite quickly here. I'm barely making any movement away from it. Woo. If we don't start moving away, I might cook. Oh, no, we're moving away. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Woo! That is a chonky boy right there. You know what, Fred Green? I will do. See, as we're so close to a star, we're going to need the hydration. Cheers at the end. You really need a best fuel scoop? I mean, having a, a decent fuel scoop is a good idea, yeah. What fuel scoop have I got again? I have got... Here we go. I've got a 4A fuel scoop. Can you jump into a black hole system? You can. Difficult to pull off, you know, actually finding a black hole, aside from the one in the centre of the galaxy, of course, or if you just look up a guide. But, uh, yeah, you can indeed just end up against black holes, and that's a problem at times. You can't remember where you left off in this game? Every time you go back, it's just, where the hell am I? Uh, somehow I do just remember what's up with them. It's kind of weird. What's Elite Dangerous about? Uh, so Elite Dangerous is a galaxy-wide space simulator of sorts. Of sorts. It's simulating our galaxy, at least to the best approximations that the developers can do. The idea is that there are three main pillars which you can rank up through. So if we have a look. Yes, thank you. Uh, if we have a look over here. There we go. So you can see. Let me just stay in the ship. You can see on the left side there, we've got my name, and then we have got combat rank. So that is the pillar of combat going up through. We've got the explorer rank. we got the trade rank. CQC doesn't matter. Just don't think about it. 
we're at the moment going down the explorer route we are literally going out into space scanning uh, systems when you scan a system you can then narrow down your focus on particular bodies and continue to refine the information to sell to npcs for credits that's one of the major trees uh the trade side is through doing trading missions buying low selling high or shutting stuff a to b that kind of approach and then combat is combat. There is a lot of uh, combat available in this game, but you can also pretty much dodge it all if you want. Depends on how you would like to play, really. I've had combat on previous streams. You can check out the replays channel on YouTube, exclamation mark replays for that, to have a look at the previous Elite Dangerous streams which I've done. Get a feel for how it plays out in terms of combat, trading, or today exploration. You know what, Adam, I like that sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Birthday postcard for you, that does sound like a plan when we get there. Right, I'm just going to take a quick peek, because it scans the system. Uh, is this... Discovered by DED101. Well, it's another new name, but let's keep going. But yeah, as much as there are space cops and bandits, you can just ignore that. If you're not about causing havoc, you can avoid the havoc too. Absolutely doable. Oh, we did it was supposed to be the Warframe tag on Tumblr. I'm actually kind of surprised they got posted up on Primetime without them speaking to you then, Ladybug. Like, you may have missed a message from them, but even then, they surprisingly shared it without that. If you put Tenno Create, I don't understand, but if you just put the Warframe tag, that is a surprise. Uh, did you post it? And, well, I'll see what you posted. I'll see what you've stopped at the moment. Let's loop around this star, then I want to bring up your uh, screenshots. I'm going to have a look at them. Not contact you in any way. That is curious. Every time I've been featured on Primetime, they have asked my direct permission first. Every single time. Uh, I've had to pick between Lavos or Wisp Prime, which comes out, which will you choose? What? Well, Lavos. I prefer Lavos over Wisp. The priming of a Warframe doesn't really change the Warframe all that much. It changes their appearance more than anything. So it's not going to make Wisp suddenly my favourite frame. No, no, no. Hello there, MS. Alright, so whilst we just let the ship accelerate away for a bit, uh, you assume their policy for video content screenshots are different? Maybe, Cosmo? Maybe. I'm, I'm just surprised. It could be that videos are just regarded entirely differently. I'm not sure on that. Uh, it could be that there's just different assumptions? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know on that. That, that, is, that is a curious one. I'm actually tempted to speak to uh, the what's it, the community team at Warframe, just to get a kind of clarification on that, how that actually lands. Anyway, let's have a look at what you posted. You said you posted it into the fashion frame. Oh, yours with the Cyandanas. See, I saw that on there. I just didn't know that was uh, your username. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can have a look at the uh, Warframe primetime chat. Let's see. Now I can know. What's your Tumblr? Let me find the linky linky links. So it was somewhere down... Oh, Discord is not the easiest thing to scroll and search through. Wait, have I missed it? Now, Pride Sandana's uh, Theater Gang Space Ninja Fashion Show. Okay. Yeah, I saw that the actual post. I was looking for the uh, primetime post. Well, fair enough. I'm assuming that is your particular blog then, Ladybug. It's not like you've submitted it to a, a someone else's blog. Wondering how far you can go in this game if you play as an anarchist troublemaker. Uh, the money making in being an anarchist troublemaker isn't too great, unless you're smuggling. But yeah. Is your own blog you post your nonsense on? Well, fair enough, Ladybug. Fair enough. 
all the same. It's a good thing you gained that feature in there, absolutely. I'm still absolutely surprised that they didn't even contact you about it, but featured all the same. I know I would like to know if I was being featured, because like, it, it just seems odd. All the same. Not to detract from that, the fact that, first of all, that you put it together, absolutely brilliant work there, very good representation for Pride, and secondly, that you didn't just do a good enough job of it to uh, do a good job, but it was picked up by Warframe and they were happy to feature it, that's just brilliant. I know how exciting that feels. So kudos to you, Ladybug, it's great to see. What are we up to Elite? We are exploring today. Previous streams have done combat and trading, so today we are exploring. Trying to get to a system which is just completely undiscovered. Once I'm out into undiscovered space, I'll stop uh, jumping as far as I have and start actually explore exploring. Right now, just getting a bit of a distance. Yeah, I'm being a bit lazy about it whilst also talking about little bits and pieces and fixing settings. <laughs> Loop ourselves around this whilst this uh, loops around. Let's have a quick look here. Is this a brand new star discovered by was that Carolon? Okay, that's another new name, but it's also another name. God damn it! How far's a man gotta go? You got your first person Warframe yesterday? Nice! Got yourself a Kubro, no doubt. You've heard some DLCs change the game a bit. Uh, with regards to Elite, yes. But also only a bit. Right, planetary landings, cool. Uh, other stuff, yeah. I'll, I'll show you planetary landings at some point, I'm sure. Like, we'll need to be the first to land on our planet at some point today. Absolutely, Ladybug. I will, of course, be sharing what I can share. Uh, I don't imagine they'll put me under any uh, NDA with their processes. I do have an NDA with DE, which means there are some things I can't talk about from time to time. But I would try and get as much information as possible with regards to their actual policies on, you know, contacting creators when they uh, showcase work. Because at the very least, if you hadn't have been around for that, I mean, you've got an entirely different username on your blog. How would we have known? That, that's the bit that gets me more than anything. How would we have known? Love City Landing? Stick around. So I can say on that there. Oh, okay, so at least a friend course it for you, the label, yeah. Yeah, from time to time, invested. Oh, hello, okay, well, that that is our target star as well, apparently. We have discovered Swoils. We're at Swoils Mo, A66 Mark 1. Three colours, yes. The Elite Days was voted for over in the Sporter T Lounge which is on my Discord. We have a vote every single week for what game is played, and this is what's won the vote this week. Alejan Alejandrosl, or Alejandro SL, quite probably. Alejandro. Well, Alejandro, how dare you also come to this location before me? I'm going to have to continue going further out. Good hey boy. Okay, this the world has been a bit more explored since I last checked. Just, just a tad. Uh, let's go in roughly this direction. I'm going to go along a bit. And then I'm going to drop us quite a chunk. Oop. That is a very interesting colour. I want to go to whatever that is. It's only three jumps away, but I want to go to whatever that colour is. Alejandro? It might be, yeah, uh, pronounced, uh, <laughs> that sound rather than a just sound, yeah, Alejandro. 
In any case, they still found it. Not allowed. Let's go. Let's go see what that purple thing is. Well, if empty space doesn't want to be found, that's the point. We find it anyway. Boldly go where no man has gone before. Here's what we do. We'll take a year to get there if we flew at a normal speed. Now, if we flew in super cruise rather than jumping. Okay, whoop, well, that's, uh, that's a star right in my face and another star right behind it. I'm going to just kind of casually go around that. Actually, I'm going to take the opportunity to scoop a bit of fuel right here. But I'm getting a little bit low. Let's get us in nice and close. I am heating up quite a bit actually on this star. I'm heating up a lot on this star. I am gonna bail. We got a bit of fuel, but uh, that's that's a lot of heat on that star. That was rising rather quickly. Do deep exploring, that's the idea. I want to find somewhere no one has been before. Literally. But if anyone's actually floating over some money, you can't, Cosmo, unfortunately. The way that games are programmed, you can't have just such uh, connected spaces. So each star system is its own place. Think like a, a Warframe mission. Where you jump from one star system to the next, you are literally jumping to that new mission. So even though you may have travelled the distance in-game, you should have arrived at the other one. If you don't jump, you don't actually get there. There's just a limit. Games can't be coded to be so continuous across literally galactic distances. It's just not an option. That looks weird as hell. Look at that over there. Uh, let's try and scoop this one. Get nice and close. Get the maximum scoopage going on. There we go. That is a lot of heat again. Come on, engines. Come on, powder distributor. Vent that heat. There we go. It's it's kind of holding. Kind of holding. Come on. 70% heat. 71. 72. It's still going up, but we're, we're handling. We're handling. 84. When I get the warning, I'll just dip on this one. I was saying Cosmo, it's uh, procedurally generated, so it doesn't house the galaxy, it houses the instructions to render the galaxy. Alright. Let's pull away from that. Don't want to burn the ship up. What's my favourite ship? Uh, I think overall probably the Python, just because it's so versatile. Medium size, you can land Pretty much. Not everywhere, but pretty much everywhere. Suitable for combat, mining, trading. Not so suitable for exploration, but that's why I have the DBX here. Warframe questions are absolutely permitted, yes. Uh, do I plan a video on Lex or Dual Tox system cannons in any foreseeable future? Uh, not specifically planned. Excuse me, sorry. Not specifically planned, but I may do them. I may. Does that mean your IKEA furniture is procedurally generated? No, Esprit, no, because... Uh, <laughs> you always get the same kit each time. Okay, I thought we were arriving at a purple star. That is very much not purple. That one might be. Let's have a look at the map again. These are both not purple. Let's see. Discover. Why? <laughs> okay. Space Acrid has been here. I Every time it's a new name. Every time. Oh, this is scoopable. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll take the opportunity. Might as well deal with feeling her up. A lovely little bit of a flare going on there. 
It's gonna take a while to get out of uh, where people have been, it seems. Like, I keep on trying to take decisions that others will probably not have taken, and they keep having taken them. That's, uh, that's certainly a thing. Alright, cool, there we go. Maxed out the tank of fuel, that is good. Oh, did not mean to do that, wrong button. <laughs> we do not need to fight the black. Right, uh, let's... Okay. So the route I've taken so far has come up from there. I dog-legged up and around. So what I could do now is take yet another dog-leg and just kind of shoot in this direction. This might again depart from the routes that others are taking. Which could again lead to brand new stuff. Now I know I've been saying that this entire stream so far, but you know... Once I go far enough, this will be true. Once I go far enough, it will be true. Until then, we're just going to keep jumping and see what we find. That's the idea. If there's some way to sort systems by discovered or not discovered, that'd be great, but we just don't have that info. Uh, which side of the galaxy is more travel footage to the community? The core of the rim? No idea. No idea. Are we just exploring? Yeah, today's an exploration day. We've done combat before, we've done trading before, uh, we've even done winning elections before. This is a exploration day. What if all the space has been discovered? It hasn't. Doesn't a map map big make your FPS drop? It depends on how you program these things. And uh, they've been smart on cookies when it comes to programming stuff. It's supposed to be big by just not rendering the big stuff. Turns out the computers are very good at handling things if you don't show what doesn't need to be shown. So yeah, whilst we uh, loop around this one, let's see. Discovered? Yep. Another new name, Marty Burke, 1969. I wonder when they were born. Hmm. Alright then, so, another new name. I'm impressed at how many names we're discovering, let alone uh, star systems. But let's jump once again off to Schwoil's PDAC-R. And then is that a B or an 8? Can't quite tell, actually. I think it's B38-2. Not sure. Let's go far out of the bubble and hope the best. What do you think I'm doing? I'm going far. I'm taking a bit of a squiggly wiggly try and avoid where people have gone because most people just kind of go let's go that way and then just straight line it so if i can dodge the obvious straight lines i'm more likely to get somewhere sooner and as given by the number of different names i'm encountering that is kind of working it's just i keep on jumping onto yet other lines and it's bored. that's another new name electric nacho <laughs> okay Electric Nacho, sure, yeah, let's do, that's uh, that's a, that's definitely a username. On your way to Beagle Point, you came across a couple of new systems. Yes, that happens. There we are. Realign that one. Soils ZPM B40 Tag Five. All right. See, I don't want to have to go too far out because I do need to get back again. I would very much like to get this ship back on stream as well, but... Do you get more stuff from the party or do you expect to get more? I'm not sure I follow. Not sure I follow that question. Alright, let's bring ourselves around. Let's keep a little bit as we go. Is this a recognised star? Uh, oh! 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 Okay, it's got nothing here. This system is pretty crap, but... This is a first discovery. Uh, also plane established 10 bodies. Wait, well. Oh, it must all just be trash. I'm not seeing any bodies. What bodies? Oh, 
don't know why all this was unticked, but okay. It said ten bodies, didn't it? You have to scan them first? No, it, it should at least give me some information to work on. Apparently not. There we go. All right, then. That has slipped me by. Or at least it nearly did. I'm out of touch. I need to uh, get on with exploring here. So I should probably walk through what I'm actually doing at the moment. We've uh, done the honk, as it were, the big old uh, charge up and boom. And now I've got these signals. I'm trying to track where the signals are and focus the scanner until it can focus in on a specific celestial body. That's generating information about the body. And the sounds give us an idea as to what type of body it is. I'm just kind of gathering all the information. At the moment, I'm just going to scan all of this, but most, if not all of this, is actually trash. Icy bodies, rock ice worlds, that are all trash. Just complete trash. When I say trash, I mean trash in terms of the value. The, the credits this will generate is buckus. But it is brand new. First person here, it seems. Either that's all the first person never submitted the scan of the star, which would be very weird. And then we got this one. There we go. With that all scanned, now if we have a look at the uh, star chart, yep, there we go. Brand new look to it. And all of these seem to have an atmosphere around them. So we see uh, it's got atmosphere, 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 but this one at the back does not have an atmosphere. Now, how far away are you? 8,000 light seconds. You know what? We'll go somewhere else. There are going to be more systems. We don't need to stop at the first one. We don't need to stop at the first one. But yeah, all of this is completely undiscovered. No name on it whatsoever. Brand new. Uh, there is a setting I would like. I just remembered that one now. General controls. Uh, no, wait. Ship controls. And that is... Target next system in route. That key. Number pad star. Select the next star. There we are. Still quickly remove any other targeting that may have happened. Are we getting yes, we a planet for their birthday? Apparently so. Let's go up there, AK is not that much. It is that much when I want to go elsewhere as well, just me and I. I still want to have a look around because if we can find other far more interesting worlds, or at least closer ones, that'd be great. We're explorers, we don't stop at the first rock we step foot on. No. No, 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 no. We've got more to do. We want to find the proper kind of place for us free. Um. Oh, this is a chonky system. Okay, let's uh, first of all have a look. Has someone else been here? Aiden84 has been here. Aiden, how dare you? And this has not only been discovered, but also mapped by Big Lee. So, yeah. Again, two new names, but it means we found one system in between others that has not yet been discovered. We are getting towards the edges, but there is still that. Still a distance to go, but that's fine. We're getting into new territory. Nothing else. If everything else goes wrong, we can still take the ship back and claim that discovery first. That is something. Is this Great Phantom? No, this is the Diamondback Explorer. Yep. Alright. Jump number, I don't know, I've lost count. <laughs> it's 
just how it is. The music in this game is pretty nice. It pairs very well with the music from the movie Interstellar. Scan oh, well, apparently there's not very much in this one. Uh, let's see, are we the first to have scanned it? Nope, Mid Valley has been here. Yet another new name. I'm genuinely impressed that we've not seen the same name twice. Move on to the next one. Jump number at least five? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure surprised I didn't go for some of the more convenient choices for exploring, but I want this one. This is a nice ship. It's the Diamondback Explorer. What other ship should you explore in if not the Explorer? <laughs> it's just made for it. Apparently this is the one I set destination to. Okay. Uh, orbital plane established, seven bodies, cool, 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 but is it new? No. Drusifer. <laughs> 178 has been here. <laughs> God damn it! Hey, right. we've come out across this way. Let's continue. Can I speed this up? Yes, that speeds it up. Hey look, it's a No Man's Sky loading screen. That is a very purple scar. 285 light years. Okay, cool. Let's try that. Let's try that. Just loop ourselves around here. Gotta have a bit of fuel in the process. Let's uh, grab a lot of fuel just so I can jump, 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 jump. Well, the might have squared. <laughs> Jets in the cargo? No, what cargo? Do I have cargo? I have no cargo. I cannot jettison the cargo. The cargo is not. Argont. Let's jump along to the next system in the Swoils SYG B442 system. Alright, new space, new scan, new acceleration, new boopy boopy info. Discovered by Misty Fire, yet another new name. And they uh, they discovered a lot of it. God damn it. Oh. God damn it. I mean, it's a pretty exotic system, a lot of stuff going on here, but god damn it. We'll just keep going. Ima imagine the uh, what do you call it? Ma imagine the sea shanties, sisters below below is going. I forgot the name of that actual song. Yes, that one. Now it's into the deep. Yeah, it's into the deep. The girls and the boys, the mothers' hands we go. We'll sail into the sun till the voyage is done. And we'll be sleeping in the cold below. That's the name of it. Now remember, sleeping in the cold below. Just the last line of that bit. Yes. What does tw get twenty thirty five mean? Click it, but only once, so you read the further text. All of the uh, redemptions give you more information when you click through. Only actually purchase it if you want what it says that it gives you. It is very, 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 very explicit as to what it does. Sisters, below, below, we're going where the winds don't blow. 
Yes, we're all bound down to the deep and we'll all be sleeping in the cold below, below. Sleeping in the cold below. There he goes. Uh, Esprit, are we timing you out on your birthday? Your birthday? Alright. If that's your wish. Consider the candles alone. Them's the rules. <laughs> Bye, I guess. We'll see you in half hour. Hopefully we'll find a good planet for we along the way. Hopefully we shall. So. Oh, Miss, in answer to your question, get 2035. There you go. It happened. Why 2035? So in Warframe, if you get permanently banned, you actually get banned until 2035. And so it became a meme. It became a meme. Sailing ships for the hard and the quick, we roll our load and go. There's a living to be made or there's hell to pay when you live in the cold. No, sleeping in the cold below. Oops. Oh, we got a very purple light on the horizon, chat. I don't know if we call it the horizon. What? It's a very purple light at the end of the tunnel. Very, very purple. Ah, this is not the proper star. This is a uh, bit of a failed star. What do we know about it, if anything, yet? Well, we know there's not a lot here. It's been discovered by Godjum. Of all the names we've come across so far, a Godjum has found this one before us. God damn it. Whee! Uh, uh, oh, shit! Oh, okay, that's a lot closer than I thought. <laughs> I was trying to casually turn. Oh, okay. Nearly rammed straight into that one. Objects in windscreen are closer than they appear. Woo! <laughs> Alright, let's just carefully go around that and uh, not crash into the failed star. That would be terrible. Alright then. <laughs> Initiate immediate landing. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Woo! Right. Just suddenly expanding in my field of view, like, ah! <laughs> See the exclusion zone just rapidly approaching. That was, uh. Okay. <laughs> Check the distances. I see the tiny, tiny black scene, Rick and Morty. We have to be very careful that I don't do that with a black hole, because you can't really tell where a black hole is, unless it's a super massive black hole. You can't really tell where it is until um, bad things happen. I do not want the bad things to happen. Let's make sure I'm very aware of the exclusion zone before I start crashing into anything again. Right, has this been found before? Yes, by Chaos Dragon. Well, Predacui, we have found your chaos. We got there. It's taken us a while. I, how much of a while has it taken us? Where did we start? We started here, 1,862 light years away. We have found your chaos. Are small black holes more dangerous or something? Uh, define more dangerous. It's a black hole at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> there's only so much rating you can give to black holes before someone goes, look, bro, you're asking between a small and big nuclear bomb. They'll still screw you up. <laughs> There's a man on high with a devil in his eye and golden hand, I'm told. It can hit you, it can hold you, he can kick you or console you if you're sleeping in your cold below. Oh. Let's jump. Sisters below, below, we're going where the winds don't blow. Yes, we're all bound down to the deep and we'll all be sleeping in the cold below, below. Sleeping in the cold below. 
All right then, where we at? Small black holes evaporate faster. That is true, but that's not all. That is absolutely not all. Uh, what's the name of the song? Sleeping in the cold below. Hermes, you've got it to look forward to, because I know you are not there yet. So you've got it to look forward to, and I don't mean an elite dangerous. I mean in Warframe. Yeah, so black holes, there are lots of different things about black holes. They're not just orbs of death in space. There is so, so much more to black holes. So much crazy, wild stuff going on. Like, for example, uh, black holes, they can be spinning, and that can affect space-time around them, curving it in all kinds of wibbly-wobbly crazy ways. You can have it where black holes uh, can have... All kinds of weird magnetic fields going on because you know things came from a star there's still magnetic fields just screwing everything as well uh you've got that black holes can be so big that the tidal forces that you feel on the approach to them if you were to be unlucky enough to fall into it will be so gentle that the stereotypical thing of spaghettification as you cross into a black hole simply wouldn't happen it would happen eventually there would reach a point where you are so close to the centre of the black hole, to the singularity, where spaghettification would indeed happen. But with a suitably large black hole, you could, theoretically, safely cross into the black hole. Because the event horizon isn't a surface, it's just a point of no return. It's an area, I should say, of no return, because it's not a point. A boundary. Black holes are very wild things. Very, very wild. And if anyone claims to really understand them, they don't. Cutting edge stuff are never properly observed. Your sisters, you so wise and true, but it's my time to go. Won't you lay me down under ground and crowns if you're sleeping? If you're sleeping in the cold below, that's blue. Hello. Apparently our destination as well. Oh my. B type giant discovered. That's new for me, apparently. Not surprised. We are quite far out. Give ourselves a good old honkers. What have we got here? Ah! Come on, the star's even new to me. An entirely new category of star. mersac has been here first. Curse you, Mersac. Curse you. Alright, did you go all the way out? Nope, Mersac didn't go all the way out. Instead, that was picked up by Angus Madmac. One. At what point did... Oh, and apparently Demon Eyes Kane came out to here, but Angus went even further out. Uh, De Demonized game. Mersac stopped here, and then it was later mapped by Sesamir, who has also apparently not continued mapping any further out. I'm going to guess this was a worthwhile world to uh, map. There's a bit of history here. Four different people claiming different kinds of first discoveries, and none of them are going to be me! Ever seen an O-type star? Maybe. Not sure. Aren't black holes still just a theory? Uh, do you mean theory as in scientific theory, or theory as in hypothesis? Which, which do you mean, Nexo? Because evolution is a theory. That's not saying that evolution is just some idea put out there by people. The way we sail on a solar rail, there's much we just don't know. So farewell with a kiss, then it's fast for the mist. Till we're all sleeping in the cold below. Freddy Queen, thank you for sharing the lyrics. I did forget most of them. <laughs> Alright, let's continue heading out. Oh, wait, no. I need to grab the right line. Yeah, yeah, we're going out this way. That's what it was. This way. Uh, let's, let's speed this up a bit. Right then. Uh, let's find a star that doesn't really stand out at all. A star that looks utterly boring. A star that people could easily overlook for its just basicness. You. I've thoroughly roasted you and not even got to you yet, so let's go. 
Yeah, it's getting singing in 10 10 performance. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're not sure? You just thought they were an idea of what we were seeing. Right, okay. Like, a lot of people don't seem to understand. In theory, a, a theory in science is something that's been rigorously tested. It's just that the scientific method doesn't allow you to declare things really as fact. It's what we've observed to the point of going, come on, it's it's pretty darn clear. But certainly when it comes for the more advanced theories, you can't just say, no, it's a, it's a clear and immutable fact. Because at once upon a time, Newtonian mechanics seemed to be correct. Everything they measured, it was all correct. But then relativity came along and pointed out, well, actually, there's these other things that Newtonian mechanics doesn't account for. And true enough, when measured, it was discovered that relativity was, in fact, correct. But uh, those things that the Newtonian mechanics didn't account for. And that's not to say that Newton was just wrong entirely. It just meant that there was yet more to be known that showed that his particular set of uh, theories didn't go far enough. So when it comes to black holes, we are basically at the point of saying they exist. Mathematically, they were conjectured. And then when we went looking for the bits and pieces that the math said should probably exist, we found it. And we keep finding it. There has been, effectively, a radio wave photograph of an existing black hole. It's a stretch of calling it a photograph, it really is a stretch, but at the same time it is still tangible evidence of a black hole. We can't directly physically see the black hole itself by the very nature of it, that's one of the biggest mysteries of it all. But yeah. We did, in fact, uh, manage to image a black hole. Which is crazy. Uh, Claire, I'm not sure what you're trying to say not quite on. You're, you're trying to correct me on something I didn't go into detail. Uh, Ermis, I'm not sure where you're going with that highlighted message either, Ermis. Would you care to explain what you're asking about there? Because that's very out of left field. I'd like to know what you're asking about, really. Exactly, brother, yeah. It's nice theory. How this process works according to the best of our knowledge and fits all observable facts as best it can. Or rather, should fit all observable facts. Not as best it can, but fits all observable facts. If we make observations which run counter to a uh, theory, then the theory has to sit back and be reconsidered. Oh yes, indeed, Zarath, I do streams. Absolutely. Every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Every Wednesday and Sunday is a Warframe. Every Friday is not a Warframe. Where the K part of Kengineer come from? I'm called Ken. I'm not K engineer, I'm Ken Engineer. Alright, yes. Okay, I may not have the perfect history down to get the minutiae of explaining the very process of how things uh, went through. You'll forgive me if I don't go into a three hour lecture on uh, scientific history of the specific considerations around uh, Newtonian mechanics. What I can say for you is that one of the major tests that uh, was taught to me at the very least was looking at how light from a distant star was bent around, I believe it was our sun, and how that the uh, mechanics given by Newtonian mechanics were out by a factor of two compared to uh, the actual bending that happened, whereas relativity had it on the nose. That's what I was referring to. Not here to give a perfect history lesson. Hold tab before I do that. Okay, 
Information engineer from the old age of the Oricon. I'm not an engineer. No. Mathematician, scientist, apparently geologist. Apparently part-time singer. <laughs> not an engineer. I'm a engineer. Right. I remember from the last time we saw something this colour. Do not fly towards it. <laughs> this may seem like a very obvious claim to make, but I'm going to... Definitely, yep. We, we are quite close to that. Look at how quickly that's moving around. Do not fly towards the small but deadly ball of gas. That would be bad. Let's continue. Now, if anything, it's uh, almost a curious irony. In films, no doubt you've seen the trope many a time over of a mad scientist coming up with all these kind of crazy gadgets and doomsday lasers. But if you think about it, if you think about it, a mad scientist usually isn't a mad scientist. A scientist does research, discoveries, note-taking, trying to expand the bounds of knowledge. Whereas your typical movie villain mad scientist isn't doing that. The movie villain so-called mad scientist is building crazy things. They're a mad engineer. And so, in perfect uh, juxtaposition to that irony, here I am, a Kengineer, with so many people assuming that means I am some form of engineer, just because those letters happen to be in the same arrangement. But I do more of the science. There's research and discovery and Warframe and other things beyond. And I'm a little bit mad. So where the mad scientist is actually an engineer, the Kengineer is actually more a scientist. Go figure. Go figure. Is Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated a mad scientist? Uh, I haven't watched enough of these to be able to verify that one way or the other. He's certainly mad. I'll give him that much. He is certainly mad. Alright, before we uh, jump out of this system, let me check. Has this one been scanned? Another new name. Ellender Krendraven. You know, it's gone a bit busier out here since I last went for a deep dark, uh, dive into the uh, far reaches of outer space. It's certainly got a bit busier out here. People have been doing a lot of scanning since I did. Ain't discovering new star systems, discovering people. That's the last thing I want to discover when I go exploring literal random star systems in an otherwise only human and Thargoid occupied galaxy. I have this... Okay, that's another route finished. I have literally escaped the bubble of human civilization by orders of magnitude beyond my uh, home reach in the hopes of finding not people. <laughs> have I ever had to be retrieved by the fuel rats? I have not, no. I have not. And I hope never to need it. It's uh, it's an ordeal for everyone. Right. Uh, let's see. So, bubble over that way. I'm going to take another dog leg of sorts. I'm going to go this way. At this angle. Zoom out a bit. And now, I'm actually going to dog leg up. That one. Let's try that. This map is huge. I mean, Hermes. Hermes, Hermes. Come on. When I said it's a simulation of the galaxy, what I meant... Is that it's a simulation of the galaxy. The whole blummin' thing, reasonably. It is a simulation of the galaxy. And over here, you see this collection of markers? This is basically the entirety of human population 
in the uh, far flung future of the year 3309 that this is based in. With some of the people, for some reason, setting up shop over there as well. And we're here. All this jumping that I have done, all of these jumps, has put me this far away. With my current route that I've set being that distance. How do you travel through all that? Uh, one jump at a time. Same way you get anywhere else. You jump. One jump at a time. How far away from Sol? Uh, I'm probably only about two, three thousand light years out at the moment. There's a black hole in the middle? There is indeed, yep. At the centre of our galaxy, in the centre of many galaxies, is a supermassive black hole, as uh, being Sagittarius A star. If you want a little bit of exis existential dread about the sheer scale of the universe, you might want to look up about that one. It's, uh, it's bonkers. It's bonkers. Should go to the other side of the galaxy, feasible for a three-hour stream. Oh my god, we're nearly two hours already on this one. And we haven't even got to where we want to be yet. Jesus, how big is this star? This is a big star. It's not, it's not huge, huge, but I, I could feel the, the size of it is more than I was expecting. Oh my god, that's eating my ship. But I'm going to just scoop and dip. I'll scoop a different star. Actually, I might need to scoop this one. Uh, my fuel is looking a little bit dangerous. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do what I need to do to scoop this star properly. I have a thought about traveling by carriers towards the place we want. I don't have carrier, and I don't want to be relying on anyone else. So it's literally just jumping out and away. Okay, so let's see how much of this I can scoop without needing to use any kind of heat sinks. Hopefully it's not too hot here. He is building a bit. We've got a lot of screen shake going on, but you know we'll handle it. We'll handle. My good old power distributor working hard here to stop my ship from cooking, but it can only do so much. The temperature climbs, but so does the fuel. And that's the important bit. We are climbing past a nice amount of heat at the moment. Yeah, people do go on huge journeys in this game. Like, they'll have many, many play sessions in a row to uh, go on huge exploration journeys and then come back home with all the goods. Up to 71%. He's holding on actually a lot better than I thought there. It seemed to climb uh, quicker than I expected at first, but no, we're holding on. Although we are up to 74% now, but that fuel is getting a lot closer to full than I uh, thought I'd get on this pass. We are holding quite well. Twenty six. And I think... Oh, that's perfect. Fully refueled. Didn't even get the uh, temperature warning. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. All right, let's go. Beautifully scooped. You recall it was a big thing to travel to Sagittarius A and back uh, when the game came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really was. In fact, it's still a thing now, to be quite honest with you. Unless you're getting piggyback there some way, somehow, some special maneuvers. If you go out and do it the manual way, like this, jump your way out there. Absolutely, it's a trip, it's a journey. That's not something you do on a whim. That's not hopping into a Warframe mission or two. That is a whole experience. And uh, it has to be the kind of experience you want. Alright, as we cycle around this one, let's have a quick looky loo. Only three bodies here. Has it been seen before? Yes, by Tog I I Star. Ah, why there's so many people? Right. 
let's go to the next one. Uh, when will our galaxy get eaten by that black hole? It won't. It won't. Black holes don't eat everything around them. Black holes are just this cosmic vacuum, constantly sucking in everything. It's not like that. We are as likely to be sucked into a black hole there, in the centre of our galaxy, as a tornado is to suck in everything on planet Earth. It's a matter of scale. Sure, yeah. There's a big old black hole. <laughs> big <laughs> doesn't do it justice. There is not a word in any human language strong enough to convey the absolute monstrosity at the centre of this galaxy. And that's not even the biggest black hole we've uh, become aware of. And yet, it is an inconceivable distance away from us as well. Truly, very far away. But even in a video game, a video game where we can practically teleport tens of light years like it's nothing, it's still an ordeal to get to that black hole. I want to make it clear, I'm about to jump here 48 light years. 48! The nearest star to us in real life is, I believe, about four light years away. I am jumping a dozen times more the distance to our nearest star. Instantly. The light from the previous star to this one, were you to consider such a journey as realistic, wouldn't have even made the distance across had it started travelling when I was born. And we just jump across like it's nothing, and still getting to Sagittarius A star is an ordeal in this game. That's how goddamn far away that supermassive black hole is. So don't you worry about it. It ain't gobbling up our world, or anything remotely close to that. Things that are remotely close to it, yes, they should be concerned, but not us. Not the vast majority of galaxies. Galaxies don't just collapse. Not without a good old shove. One of the most terrifying things about the universe is also one of the most comforting. It's so god darn vast. It's mind-bogglingly vast. And because it is so damn vast, it is, by and large, empty. When you look up into the night sky, you don't see this wall of white from all the stars out there. You see mostly black pinpricked with light, not the other way around. That's how big it is. And in fact, that very fact that you can look up into the night sky and see night is a subject of significant uh, scientific intrigue. Because consider for a moment, if there is an infinite universe with an infinite number of stars, this was a big if way back when, infinite universe with an infinite number of stars and infinite time for that light to reach you, then there would just be this blanket of white. Because for every star that's further away, there would also be another star about as far away. And so they would make up for the fact that they are further away by having just more of them. These are the kinds of things that you really recognise when you look up, and it shows you just how bloody empty it all is. And again, this, despite that, Orthodox P has found that. We will continue travelling. That's quite a distant exoplanet to move and discover. 28,000 light years, my god. A real life exoplanet discovery at that distance, that's impressive. Remember that scam where you paid to name a star? Oh, I've heard of all kinds of scams like that. You can name a star. You can own a piece of land in Scotland. You will be a lord. No, you won't. All right, we've made another long journey trying to find a system that no one's been to before. Please tell me no one's been into this one. 
Coco Night Com has been here. As has uh, Piscina della Muerte. I think I butchered that name, but I'll take it. Whatever. Just. Mm. We continue. We continue. That one. 15 jumps. I don't know how far it is. I'm going. Are you dangerous? You haven't seen the gameplay of this in years? It's still going. Alright. I'm actually really surprised how far we have to go. I'm actually really surprised. <laughs> Does that translate as Pool of Death? Oh wow, okay, what a username. What a username. Uh, upstate November bot saying, from what I recall, due to rapid speed acceleration, the power of gravitation of these holes, a lot of things just leave or stay within the orbit before they can reach the point of no return. Yeah, like, if you aren't already inside of a gravity well, it is actually quite difficult to end up inside that gravity well. It is genuinely difficult to end up in one. Like, for example, uh, here's, here's something that might actually be surprising to you if you've never heard about this before. Of the two options, to launch something out of the solar system from Earth or to launch it into the sun, it's actually easier to launch something out of the solar system. Think about it. You got this sun here, the center of our solar system, occupying and containing the vast, 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 vast majority of all the mass in the solar system and despite that huge gravitational well despite us being on one of the inner planets the third planet from the sun it is still easier to leave the solar system than it is to get to the sun now that's just mind-boggling because you need to slow down to get to the sun exactly yes The speed we are already travelling at here on Earth is fast enough that we stay this far away from the Sun. If you go faster, then your orbit would attempt to take you away from the Sun. And it doesn't take that much faster for it to achieve that, comparatively speaking. It's still quite fast, yes, but it's not that much faster. Whereas... If you uh, then head towards the Sun, you basically have got to shed all of that orbital velocity that you've got. you got to fight against the physics that happened before you were even born, let alone thinking of trying to get to the sun. When people talk about, oh, can't we just launch uh, all our waste into the sun or anything? Never mind the cost of actually getting it into space. That's completely unrealistic in every way whatsoever to then get it to the sun <laughs> it ain't that easy you can't just drop it off earth and wee off it goes into the sun that's not how it works <laughs> this ain't no flat earth thing no 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 all right we first here oh oh we're first here stop we're first let's see anything good here Eight bodies. I'll take it. Let's see what we got. All right, give me give me some good stuff. Give me some good stuff. Let's see. We're looking at icy bodies and some asteroid clusters. That is not good stuff. Icy and rockies. Let's have a look. I mean, I might be able to land on them, so could be fun. Please don't all be in orbit of Visa. Please don't. I'm not going that far away. I, I just steadfastly refuse to go that far. Oh, they're all over there. How far away is it? Uh, does it say the LS here? thought it would. Ah, there it is. It's on, I was looking at the wrong side of the screen. 18,000? I don't want to go 18,000 light seconds. Oh, that's so far. That it... 
That must be saying Odyssey and not there's a settlement there. That'd be stupid. That is so far! Ah. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Oh, we should probably should, because we've had such bad luck so far. I know. It's far. Look, I've done combat and trading. To have it this distance is... Ah. Alright, let's, let's take our pick then, chat. Let's take our pick. Do we go to candidate number one? This is an icy world composed mainly of water ice. Worlds like this will not have had much heating in the past, forming in the cooler regions of a star system, and have retained many volatiles as solids within their crust. Or we could go to another icy world, or another icy world, or another icy world. Or we could go to another icy world, which we pick. <laughs> and we've got the odd one out here. This one has a strange bit of things going on. I have no idea what these blue lines are supposed to represent. Beats me. This one here. The one that kind of stands out from the rest, ignoring the atmosphere on that one. Is it me? Is that one rotating very quickly? I think they all are. Let's go to this one. Let's be first there. Let's go tag our name on stuff and then take it home. So the way we do this, we now need to travel all the way over to it. That's going to take a bit. Now we're going to accelerate as we go, so as much as it says about 15 minutes now, you can see the timer is ticking down a lot quicker than it should do because we are accelerating. We are accelerating. We'll get there a lot quicker than that. Potentially. Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see what we find. We'll see what we find. Once we get there, we can scan it and have a look around. It could be interesting. Hopefully it should be interesting. That's the idea. Because this is, after all, going to be Esprit's world. Is this a DBX? It is indeed a DBX, Ginger Monster. You're absolutely right. Ginger Monster here was helping out earlier on with the testing for the weirdness with Ash. And let me tell you, it's freaking weird. Oh, I've got so much to look into on that one. It's not even remotely funny. I wouldn't even look this deeply into it, but it's just so utterly bizarre. I'm probably just going to make a full video on it. It's ridiculous. Uh, no, we don't get to name planets, but it will still be Esprit's planet. Everyone here will know that. We shall make our glorious, glorious journey. I mean, we'd ask Esprit what they wanted to name it, but, uh, well, actually, you know, Esprit's timer has timed out. So, yeah. Where are we going? We are going to Pro Yuru, Delta Zulu Tac Juliet, Bravo 50 Tac Zero, B Star Planet 3. Has it worn off yet? Uh, it should be about worn off now because it's for about 33 minutes and Esprit requested 38 ago. So it should be worn off by now. Has a nice ring to it. No, 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 this isn't a ring planet. There are ones with rings. There are even ringed suns. That was very interesting to see, but no, this is not one of those. Zom so saying I should do some testing on how strength affects it. Maybe we can dump it or keep a neutral blade storm builds now. I mean, Zom, I had it on 40% strength and a one shot, a level 190 Exo Goxtad officer using only mods that should have zero effect on Bladestorm damage. Go figure. I know what you meant, obsolete yard. I know. I just took it around with it. Remember the seven second rule when jumping to me bodies? I'm aware. I'm aware. Also the fact that I can do it at about six, maybe the edge of five. I'm going down to a station. Ring suns in real life for this game, or both? Uh, well, certainly in real life as well, but also in this game. I believe it is common scientific understanding that the formation of a planetary system starts from the accretion disk around a sun, and that will be, for the time, a ringed sun.
Yeah. Uh, so th there's loads of crazy stuff going on with Blade Storm. I'd say unless you want to be testing it yourself, in which case go right ahead, have fun. Don't lose your mind. I am. Otherwise, wait for the video on it, and then also understand that it'll probably get patched as well. So don't invest too heavily as well. Alright, so over in that direction is the star that this planet is orbiting around, because we jumped in on one star, but the other star is over here, and we are now coming in to get closer and closer to this planet, or uh, steady us out a bit so we don't overcook it. Don't need to do anything crazy here. <laughs> uh, some lyrics don't stick as well, Brenna Queen. Not quite as memorable as uh, we all live together. Let's give this a bit of a swirl as we go in, you know? Make it a spiral. Give me the old razzle dazzle. Alright, so we should be approaching the range where we can surface scan this. So let's slow us, yep, we are in scanning range, let's slow down. Uh, no, let's get a bit closer actually, let's get a bit closer. I was reading it, Chuck, as uh, Predator Queen was posting it. Alright. So from this distance here, I'm now going to activate the surface scanner by going like this. So the way we surface scan is we are going to fire probes at the surface of this planet here. And that is going to start mapping it out for us. Esprit, this is your planet right here. You are just on time, Esprit. This is your planet. As far as we can tell, completely undiscovered. I'm going to let that probe streak all the way down to the planet. We'll see how big of a radius it gives us. Oh, that's a big old spread right there. It's a good start. 44% of it scanned in a single pop. I will take that. Let's see. If I aim, I think it's there. That should give us a nice hit on the back side of it as well. Can we name it? Not in-game, but we can understand that the name is something in in our hearts. And we'll have the stream record of the name. Surface by 50%. That was a very good hit. If I... What's the button to switch? Ah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That, that was a good scan on that side. So if we do the same over this way, we might get a full scan on it. So far, so good. You dub it Quackers? Alright, this is Planet Quackers. This is indeed Planet Quackers. Esprit gets to name it Predator Queen because it's Esprit's birthday. Oh, that was a perfect shot, I think. So there it is. Complete. Efficiently and fully scanned. Did we not do the honk? We did the honk. That was right at the start. Right at the start of the system. I already did the honk. That's how I knew those uh, things here to have a look at. Alright, we can back out of that now. Now that we've done the surface scan to a detailed degree, we can land. Esri, do you want us to land daytime, nighttime, or twilight? We got daytime, obviously that side, nighttime this side, twilight right down the middle. Please ignore the wiggly line. I, I don't know what's going on with that, to be quite honest with you. Simulation error. Where would you like, Esri? Daytime, nighttime, or right down the middle? Which would you like? You gotta decide quick. We're approaching the planet. I think I'm going straight over the pole a bit there. Right in the middle. Arky kokey. Let's head down into the twilight zone. Bet you didn't expect to hear that today. We'll bring ourselves in at a shallow approach. 
aiming to come in just below the horizon line that we can see there. A nice gentle descent will mean that we can glide in a suitable distance and spot a beautiful location to land. I'm going to pitch up ever so slightly for now. Bring us gently down towards the surface. Alright, let's steepen this up a bit now. See, this is an extremely cratered rock here. In fact, that terrain looks like absolute hell. I'm going to pitch over. And go to that, what looks like a bit of a smoother terrain over here. That terrain looks nice. So if we uh, get ourselves a little bit more over it. What do we get when we get onto the surface? Uh, we can have a look around. Let's bring us in here. Uh, I think if we come down to the edge of this terrain, the uh, more hilly terrain, could be interesting. Crash my ship? I have no intention of doing that. Alright, so we've dropped out the uh, FTL. We have no means of uh, travelling faster than light at the moment. We are now bringing in towards the surface. We are five kilometres above the surface and rapidly descending. Yeah, No Man's Sky took a significant amount of inspiration from uh, Elite. Elite based on a much older game. Elite. <laughs> Same company, I think, actually, yeah, obviously. Looks like brownies? Yes! Yeah, it's, it's a birthday cake planet. It's made of birthday cake. Yeah, bring the crackers. That is rude. You cannot refer to so many people in this channel like that. Wow, November bot. How dare you? <laughs> Alright, 700 meters, 600, 500, 400, 300, 200 meters, leveling us out. 100 meters. Let's slow it right down. Gravity here is 0.21g, one-fifth of that of Earth. Slightly more gravity than our moon. Landing gear deployed. I think we land just around about here. Should be pretty good. Oh. There we are. I ever so slightly clipped the bottom there, but it's fine. Alright, we have landed! We are the first people ever, ever, to see this particular land and sky. Out in the distance, that red old light there, I think that is the uh, other sun for this planet. If I look down here, deploying the buggy. I'm going to put a massive candle on the planet. I think when we leave, we can consider ourselves the candle. No Alright then, now to remind myself how I drive. They're very different systems to uh, piloting a ship. I'm much more comfortable driving ships. There we go. That's the ship we travelled all the way here on. That, that's our ship right there. We came all the way out here in this lovely little thing. But I think it's blocking the view. I don't know about you, but I, I feel like this ship is blocking the view. So I don't need it anymore. Ship. Go away. Ship Bye! And gone. Jump to FTL. All right then. Goodbye, ship. <laughs> it's just in orbit, guys. It's just in orbit. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> but yeah, here we are. Oh, don't worry. We're in the uh, confined environment here. You know, spacesuit and everything. Look. Look at me here. Look, look here. You see? 
We're, we're properly protected. We got the buggy around us. We're all good. Because there's no atmosphere here. I can't even breathe in the chocolate cake. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look around this chocolate cake and see if there's something uh, present. In fact, the scanner is picking up something in this direction. So let's head over here carefully as we go because we are in low gravity. Can't be crazy on this. Let's head across the cake and see if there is a hidden little present. Maybe it's candles. Could be, yeah. Imagine like a volcanic vent or something. I don't think we'll find a volcanic vent on this icy well, but you never know. You never know. Range of things can happen. We might even find alien life. Hopefully not. Aliens are typically pretty problematic in this game. So let's maybe not. We can see that the uh, the signal is narrowing down. In fact, we have got something on our heads-up display. What are we detecting here? My uh, ability to target it is not working. I don't know what I need to press because apparently the target button does, is not the target button. We have found... Ah, a metallic meteorite. Well, okay. Not quite as dramatic as some of you were probably hoping for. Uh, what is the button for? No fire roots to find, of course. Ta-da! Pop it open. And we can scoop up the stiff. Let's see, we've got tin. And we got ruthenium. Oh, ruthenium is some good stuff. Um, cargo scoop. Options. Controls. <laughs> One sec. For some reason, they have different controls for the driving stuff, including the cargo. Why is cargo scoop home? Cargo is C. Why would you make home? What what backwards idea was? Uh, whatever. Oop! Not so fast! Not so fast! Boom! And there's chromium. Bring ourselves around. We are grabbing the first samples from this world that have ever been collected by mankind. The first ever samples. And apparently the game has decided this is time for a bit of piano. No, uh, nope, none of those buttons can. Press the correct button, damn you. <laughs> Gently bring ourselves over to the next one. Very gently, and I might be able to get both of them in this pass. There we are. Is that the one that's right next to me? No, the other one. There we are. And then one more to grab. Oh, got it straight away. Perfect. And there we are. That is the first ever slice of this chocolate cake that is your world, Esprit. There we go. How wonderful is that? And whilst we've been here, you might have noticed that it's gotten a bit darker. Like, I've got the lights on, but uh, it's certainly gotten a bit darker here. We, uh, I think it's on this side? Here, here we go. Yeah, it's getting darker. That I think actually, can I target it from here? I don't think I can. No, I, I can't seem to target the star from here, but I'm, it feels like that might be it there. I can't tell. 
What's this about? Uh, so we are exploring at Elite Dangerous. We have landed on a planet which no one has ever landed on before, having travelled for a couple hours to get here. And yeah, this is Esprit's chocolate cake of a planet. That's Esprit's chocolate cake of a planet. Fat Cat two three four five. Thank you very much for continuing your support over on the channel here. Subscribing at tier one thirteen months. That is a while. That is a while. Fat Cat, thank you very much for continuing to show your support. I do appreciate it. Oh. Cheers indeed. So it looks like we can jump pretty well in this place. Ah! <laughs> yeah, maybe don't do that to your SRV. <laughs> maybe don't just leap in the air at random on a low grab planet. Okay, okay. Low gravity makes traction really kind of poor. Apparently we were stuck on something there for a second. Now, I could go wandering and exploring. Uh, I think, though, to be quite honest with you, chat, we are probably just going to find more rocks. Because this is the unfortunate downside of the Horizons update. They added in these planets, or rather, the planets are already there. They added in the ability to land on airless planets. And what you find on these airless planets are rocks. Oh, I'm picking up a different signal. I am picking up a different kind of signal over this way. I'm gonna I'm gonna go this way, but it, it it's it's a rocky, icy place with rocks and ice. Does my vehicle have lights? It does. I just turned them off earlier. Let's turn them back on. That's probably gonna be a good idea. Full beam. Okay, that's too much. Fifth beam. I could turn on the night vision, but it looks weird. Attempt to ramp into orbit. I, I mean, the gravity is still stronger than that of our moon. We're not going to achieve that. I can do this. Jump that little gap there. And then, uh, okay, I'm spinning out. Take control it. Find that thing we were tracking. It's over this way. Heading, heading 155 degrees, roughly. 155. Tired, can you cause chaos? It depends on the kind of chaos you're intending to cause. I don't ruin Esprit's birthday at the very least. Swim cake drifting? Yeah, it's all the icing and frosting, you know? Slippery roads. Oh. Slippery gumdrop mountains? Something like that. <laughs> Alright. A little bit faster. I think we should be able to manage a little bit faster. I'm really curious as to what this signal is going to turn out to be. Not going to lie. Oop. Okay, wheels are a little bit jumpy, jumpy there. Uh, 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 uh. Control it. Control it. Control it. I can control it. I control it. It's fine. It's fine. Really no idea what we're approaching at the moment. Like, genuinely no idea what's creating this signal. It's also quite far out. But, we're already this far out. Like, we've got to have a look. What is it? Jijim, jijim, jijim. That's the idea. Let's just jump over that little beak. That looked... Both of those look problematic, to be quite honest. There we go. Tactical flight. You betting on more rocks? I mean, it might be more rocks. Might not be. Look how much of the scanner it's taking up. Like, this is a whole wideband thing. Whatever it is, it's... Uh, it's making some noise on my scanner. Car has a jetpack? Of course it has a jetpack. How else do you expect to get out of craters? Drive up the side? They can be steep, you know. Can you mine the cake planet? Well, we did pick up some uh, gumdrop buttons a moment ago, I suppose. Not exactly um, human safe, but it is an alien planet, so it's fine. We'll just shove them in storage. 
And I hope the signal turns out to not just be like, oh god. Whoa, 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 whoa! Where's the world go? Where's the world? <laughs> That's full beam? Um... What? Yeah, I think that's the proper response right there. Rethink your introduction, mate. Alright, so... I've got a few options here. I can ignore the signal. I can continue forwards blindly. Or I could turn on... Uh, night vision. I could turn on night vision. What do we think? Give up, go forwards, or turn on night vision. How are we feeling on this one? Maybe the signal's down the hole? It's, it feels like it might be. It's crazy dark. So if you have a look out there, like... Why is it so dark just here? What is this? Turn on night vision goggles if you see Cthulhu. Run. That sounds like an idea. All right. Oh, that doesn't look so bad. Why was it so dark? Huh? Like... That doesn't look so bad at all. Okay, gingerly we go. Gingerly. Okay, okay, that, that's faster than I intended, but you know what? It's fine. We're sliding, but it's fine. There we go. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Oop, oop, oop. Careful, 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 careful. Just because we can go faster doesn't mean we should. Yeah, this is fine. I don't know what we were worried about. We wanted to explore in the black, and we are exploring in the black. It's very, very dark here, like... Oh, I think I know what it is. It's because we're in the twilight band of this planet. So there must be a large mountain block in the little bit of sunlight. Because the sun's so far away, I just couldn't really tell. That's fine. Alright, let's uh, let's let's uh, continue exploring this way then. Because that signal on the scanner doesn't seem to be getting much closer, but it can suddenly pop up on you. Hopefully not to devastating effect. God, this looks creepy as hell. Like, this is full beam on my lights here. And this is as far as we can see. Is that sig Every time I think the signal is becoming more coalesced, it doesn't then actually pan out to be anything. And it's still further to go, but I'll keep trying. There's something, and I want to find out what that something is. We didn't travel, what, like 3,000 light years to get gazumped by a crater. Oops. Didn't quite jump that, but it's fine. On. What? How far is this thing? I wish I had some kind of indication, some way to triangulate. Still about this way. Flippy car? Maybe not. Nope. Incoming music. Maybe we're approaching. Maybe. Maybe. Copium. Oh! Oh! Signal's changing. We're getting, uh, getting an update to the signals. 
What are, we, what are we approaching? What are we approaching? It is on the lower band, so lower frequency signals. So it's probably another rock. But we've come all this way. I have to know. What are we approaching? We're hearing the signal now. It's bouncing back in a uh, more refined fashion. Saying it's a bit more to my right. It's about this way. Please don't just be a rock. I didn't come all this way just for a rock. Cheers, brother queen. Oh, good god. We're fine. We're alive. This terrain is getting nastier and nastier. But it's fine. It's fine. I'm actually kind of happy for the low gravity right now, so we don't get any sudden just death. Doing a lot of climbing and falling here. Really gotta know. Alright, that signal is getting stronger. It's getting tighter. We're getting more of an idea as to what we're looking at. Putting a little bit more gas on the pedal here, as it were. Control our descent. This way. We are very close on the signal now. I'm going to bring us down a little bit on the velocity there. It's popping up on the scanner. Let's get up close. Okay, so what have we just travelled all this way for? Oh god. Oh, just lowered the crater. What have we travelled all this way for? A rock. It's, um... It's a rock. Just on the other side of this hill. It's a... Uh, it, it, it's a rock! There it is. On planet Esprit. <laughs> Trying to... Edge just towards it. It's a rock. What else could it have been? Ugh, I don't know, honestly. This far out, more rocks. Different kinds of rocks. Maybe if we were very, very, very lucky, a volcanic vent, but on a planet like this, I don't yeah, know. And that was carbon, 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 and there was a bit of nickel, but it looks like it just got yeeted into the abyss. There we go. Yeah. We drove all that way because we detected a bit of carbon. And that is why, unfortunately, I say that this update is, like the rest of the game, wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Because it has you drive all that way, this mysterious wide bang signal, and as you finally get there, you find on this rocky planet, a rock. Not like a huge deposit, not some weird, curious formation. The devs created the gameplay loop of you driving across a rock to find a rock. But the mystery was fun whilst it lasted. Realistic you find a rock on the desolate planet? No, it's not realistic. No, no, it's really not realistic, actually. First of all, the whole scanner thing is weird. But second of all, you're speaking to a geologist, okay? 
I'm, I'm not like professional in the field actually doing geologist work geologies, but I have a degree in geology. I like to think I know a little bit when it comes to rocks and rock formations and the kind of interesting things you can find. And you do not need to send a player on a wild goose chase for a bit of freaking carbon. You can have some incredible things. Our planet, our one planet, is littered in astounding things. You go to the right part of this uh, wonderful world, any of the many right parts, and every mile you find yet another new absolutely bonkers thing. You sure as hell find a little bit more than a rock sat on a rock, and that rock can be broken into four chunks of rock. That is my issue with the update. Wide as an ocean. Deep as a puddle. And let me tell you, it's been a dry day. Recharge your lessons again? You know it. You know it. Alright. Uh, I think it's time to press the right button again. Down here. Now let's see if the ship wants to play Bonnie. Any second now. No, we're not going to bother with the carbon. Um, ship? Hello? It's probably just gliding down. Yeah, I hope so. Ah! There we go. See? Not even slightly concerned. This is where he explodes in front of you. <laughs> there we go. Let's gently bring ourselves over. The ship is currently figuring out how to land. That's fine. It is a bit of a rocky area. Heck. Rocky area. Let's... Like, look, at the, look at all these rocks here. The, why are these rocks not worth mentioning, eh, gang? Whatever. Let's head over to the ship. Hoi. Bouncy, bouncy. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Bouncy. Bouncy, bouncy. Bounce, 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 bounce. Bounce, bounce. And we need to, uh, I think, come in from the front of the ship. Slow us down a bit. And board. Close cargo escape. Ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. See? It was fine. <laughs> I ship how is space. <laughs> Alright then. How far away from home are we? Route plotted, 52 jumps, 2,349.45 light years. That's going to take about an hour. That's, that's going to take about an hour. State Civil War, wonderful. Alright, planet. Esprit's world. We landed in twilight. It drifted into night. Landing gear removed. Yep. My bad. <laughs> yep, you can see the uh, last vestiges of light holding on where it's not in the shadow of the other hilly terrain. We ate too much cake? We did indeed, yep. But this, this is Esprit's planet. Brand new world. And it's a chocolate world. Chocolate cake in amongst bowls of ice cream. 
That stands for something. That stands for something. You gotta appreciate the sound design. That is a nice engine. That is a nice engine to it, isn't it? Right. Activate frame shift drive. We're angled up towards the very first 52 jumps home. Might as well get started, I suppose. We're gonna have to do it at some point. The question is, Jack. Do you want me to go through the entire process of driving home? Do you want me to fly you all the way through it? Because that, that's that's what we got now. It's to uh, go. I would have scanned more planets, but it took us longer than I actually expected to get away from uh, where other people have been. I was genuinely a bit surprised by that. <laughs> Alright, let's loop around that one. And jump. I initiated the jump there at 26 minutes, uh, 26 seconds past 51. On the timer there. Let's see how long it takes to get to the next point where I started charging the jump. We'll need to pay attention to fuel scooping along the way because we definitely need to scoop to be able to get home. I could try and do more efficient jumps which are shorter but therefore cost less per light year. Allow you to scoop less uh, often. However, it also means you need to jump a heck of a lot more. So it takes a long time to travel. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's, it's about a minute per jump, isn't it? You know? It's about a minute per jump. At this point, we could continue searching and scanning and hoping to find brand new things. Uh, we also get plenty of value from scanning things that other people have scanned. It's just we don't get the first discovery bonus. We don't get our name planted on the uh, record, as it were. The things you can find whilst out scanning, you can find uh, various stars and their stellar classifications. You can find all kinds of quirky stars. You can find planets of various types. You got the volcanics and the rockies and the ices and the gas giants, water worlds, ammonia worlds. Worlds that may even be Earth like or suitable for terraforming into Earth like worlds. Not that the NPCs in this game seem to do anything with that information, but it is information that exists. Uh, that is an unfortunate part of this universe, isn't it? Uh, and this, this world, this game, is that there's so much that looks like it could happen. That's where they stop. So, so much that looks like it could happen. Maybe jump doesn't sound too bad until you realise it's nearly an hour. You could drive halfway to London that time. It, it's a bit of a jaunt, isn't it? Naturally, though, in this time, I'm also travelling uh, 2,000 light years. So, you know, it's not that bad. That is, uh, I mean, if we were travelling at the speed of light, it would literally take longer to get home than since... Uh, since the year of uh, Caesar, like, the month of July is younger than the time it would take for us to get home travelling at light speed. Consider that. The month of July has been around for a shorter time than this trip at light speed. I think it's fine that it takes a little bit to get there. If you're easy, everyone would have done it. Oh, that has a very pink star on the approach too, which probably means I can't scoop it. <laughs> Just a thing, isn't it? Hey, look at the bright side, Idle Outlaw. Look at the bright side. The person who screwed up the calendar got stabbed. 
So, you know, you, you got that solace to hold on to. Have to not get ambushed on the way home? Yeah, I probably won't get ambushed. Like, we are nowhere near the Thargoid War. We are nowhere near any people. And we're in a quick little ship. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I was really hoping that we were going to come across something more than just a rock. Like, that scan signal had such a wide band on it at first. Top to bottom. I, I was really hoping for something more than a rock. I, honestly, chat, I'm sorry. I, I really was expecting more. I don't know why I expected more. I, I knew the chances were just absurdly against that. I just figured, you know, it's, it's been years. It's been years since I last done that. Maybe there'd be more than a rock on a rock. Maybe. Turns out if you want something, it doesn't mean it happens. Let me guess, Lady Boke, you have yourself a salad on that day. A very particular salad. Pop a little knife into it. Scammed by rock? I don't know if the rock would anything wrong. It was just my scanner that went. <gasps> Something out there. I can detect it from all the way over here, and it's it's a thing. Uh, as we get closer, it's kind of like it's there, it's there, it's there, it's a rock. Maybe there's something under the rock. No. No. And no. Were it so easy, but no. Hey, jumpy, jumpy. Next one. Let's go, let's go. I don't think I have the means or materials or access to speed up the journey. Like, Someone was mentioning earlier about neutron stars. I don't know where they are around here. Look it up, we take up so much time, we might as well just jump in. Okay, can we given us two rocks instead of just one for how long we drove for it? Honestly, for that kind of amount of time spent, you expect a lot more. Like, let, let me let, let me give you an indication as to just how much that carbon is worth and why I ignored it. Let's let's pop ourselves into a scooping orbit here for a moment. I can show you. If we go to the inventory here, we go down to materials. You see, I already have 44 carbon. And carbon, you can see on the right hand side, it has a single tick in the circle there. It's a basic material. You compare to biotech conductors, of which I have 13, which are five ticks. Now, the way that materials work in Elite Dangerous is that you can go to materials traders. You can literally trade one material for another at a ratio. And that ratio, if I recall correctly, is 6 to 1 per tier. So cadmium here is a basic material like carbon, but it is two tiers higher. So one cadmium is worth 36 carbon. Oh yeah, that's what it was. And a, uh, let's see, do I have a higher grade material to call on? Oh, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of it. Yeah, molybdenum. That one is again worth 36 times. I think well, it's went up to four times. Uh, four tier. Yeah, ruthenium. The ruthenium we picked up on that planet. I picked up two ruthenium. One of those is worth 216 carbon. So the first rock we came across, the first rock had over 100 times the material value of the second rock. You can see why I was a bit disappointed traveling that far for some bloody carbon. You can see why. Yeah. I'm okay with a bit of randomness, but it's about respect for the time spent, making things feel worth their while, making it feel significant in some way. Chuck, cheers. That there was the equivalent 
are spending 20 minutes to open up a lith relic. You're not even sure it was going to be a lith relic. And you discover after 20 minutes you've opened up a lith relic and you manage to get yourself a Bratton Prime Receiver. That's what that felt like. With no indication along the way, aside from sheer metagame knowledge as to what it was going to be. Only from past experience of disappointment. It's like, here is a thing, go explore, do the thing, and go eat, try it! Yeah. These Bratton Prime is good. <laughs> well, Bratton Prime Incarnate, yes. But even then, you only need one of those receivers ever, and you probably already have it. Single cobblestone from Diamond Ore? Not even that, it's like, uh. To put it into Minecraft terms, like, you see off in the distance a structure, you, you've gone through the desert, and you see there's this structure, but it's such a long way away, so you're travelling, you're travelling, you're travelling, you're travelling, you're travelling, you're like, how big is this biome? How did I know there was a structure over here? Maybe you're following a map or something, you travel, 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 and when you get there, it's one cobblestone. Bear in mind that the place that you got the map from gave you diamonds. One cobblestone. That's how it feels. And it's like, come on. Was that at all necessary? Couldn't give any kind of indication on that. And that unfortunately is Horizons. I would like to tell you that there is more to it than that, but that is the entire planetary landing experience. Uh, near enough. When it comes to, if you're not going to structures, sorry, there are structures on civilized places. If you're exploring, that's basically it. Uh, you can come across occasionally. You can come across more exotic features, like you may come across a, something more like a volcano, but not erupting, but just a volcanic structure. Or you may come across some uh, odder rock formations in very curious locations which can give you a variety of high-grade materials. You might come across something that is of a slightly alien Thargoid variety. But the amount of time you'd have to spend, the amount of dice you'd have to roll, and certainly the sheer extent of the search you would need to make if you do not use metagame resources is insanity. I should have hit jump. Wide as an ocean, leave us a puddle. But hey, there might be a pebble in the puddle. It's just a pebble, though. Pebble. And this is why I don't really play Elite Dangerous all that much. Exploration can be nice, it can be chill. You can sit back, relax, go out, scan, honk, get a beautiful sound experience. The audiovisual experience is definitely right there. But it's more of a podcast game. It's more of a podcast game, isn't it? Alright, I'm going to scoop on this one, because I notice my fuel is getting a little bit shaky. Let's just make sure I've got what I need. Fuel wise. Bring us in a bit more. I can get in a bit more. There we go. Yeah, you can just skip the landing bit, pretty much. You, you can just skip it. It's fine. Alright, beginning to overheat there, so let's, let's leave. It's, uh, it, it's similar to some of the issues that No Man's Sky certainly had right at the start. It's similar to a lot of things when it comes to exploration. Uh, this this goes way back to before video games. That some people's ideas of exploration is well, if you get a list of things that could happen and roll some dice, that could make an exploration story, right? And it's yes, it can, but you'll be missing a number of things. You'll be missing uh, the. Oh, sorry, you'll be missing first of all the value of the time spent. 
to make it worth discovering stuff, because usually if you go for such a rolling method, you're gonna pad it out. That's how these things often go. You can't be exploring and finding great things every moment, but in an attempt to establish some kind of simulation to the real uh, to the game, to put the realism into it, you spread it all out, and it ends up being spread a bit far out, typically. But secondly, you lose the story aspect. That's a huge part of exploring, not just to see something pretty here or there, to be given a procedurally generated environment, but to discover something to talk about. Discover something to talk about. So yeah. The biggest talking point with uh, the rock we landed on there was that it had a brownish tint. A, uh, a mottled texture, and so we called it a birthday cake. For Esprit's birthday. The story there is Esprit's birthday. So thank you, Esprit, for giving us that inspiration. Exactly, Lady Boogie, yeah. That's just how it goes. You can't roll dice and have that replace creativity. I remember reading at one point uh, someone's breakdown of exploration in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. And they were this was a post of someone who was attempting to defend this was someone trying to say, look, by the book, exploration is... It exists. It's a whole pillar of uh, Dungeons & Dragons. They put it into the game. It's there. I don't know what people are complaining about. Here's how it goes. And they walk through it step by step. By the book, how it goes. And it basically accounted for... The players determine the direction they're going to go. They don't know where they're going to go because they're exploring. So the players pick a direction. It doesn't matter which direction because they have no information to work on. They explore. So they attempt to pick, go in a direction. Okay, cool. Roll a die. From this roll of a die we'll decide if they continue in the direction they thought they were going in. We will now also roll a die to determine the weather. We will roll a die to determine the uh, density of the foliage. We will roll a die to determine this. We will roll a die to determine that. We will roll a die to set detail after detail after details. So we can fill out this scorecard of environment. The players are going to need to uh, make sure that they have food and water for their travel. So let's, let's roll a die as well to see if they can find any further food or water along the way that we're using this skill don't forget this player is using this skill they don't really have a choice here it's the only right thing to do but they are choosing to use this skill whereupon when we roll a die we add a number to the die that we have rolled we'll roll a die we'll roll a die and we'll roll a die most of dnd is just spicy maps no it's not no it, it's really not i love not DD is storytelling. Supported by dice. Most of DD does not use dice. You will use dice a lot, yes, but not most of it. The DM sets the scene. The players, on understanding the scene, decide on how they wish to interact with the scene. And the DM adjudicates the results of that and determines whether or not any dice are required to handle that. Exploration is not about going from A to B. It is not literally about the journey. You know what the journey is? The journey is the journey. The exploration is what you find along the journey. It is what happens along the journey. If you can sum it up in much the same way as describing the journey along a Texan interstate. If the journey is about as interesting as a hundred miles of straight road, which occasionally goes up and down because the terrain does, that's not exploration. 
exploration is insane. 2,000 light years have passed. It's not a number. 2,000 light years might as well be 2,000 miles. Could be 2,000 parsecs. Could be 2,000 centimeters. You're exploring as ant. Ow. 2,000 centimeters, 20 meters. You can do a lot of exploring in 20 meters. In the right location, with the right things to look for. Well, exploration isn't just writing down the details of the environment. It isn't just determining randomly, procedurally, the temperature, the humidity, the precipitation, the light level, the rockiness of the terrain, the amount of foliage. That's not exploration. That's just generating data. That is drawing cards out of a deck. Anyone can shuffle a deck and draw cards. The game, when you play with a deck of cards, isn't drawing cards. It's what the cards mean. It's what they lead to. It's what happens when you bring those cards together. That's exploration. And in fact, when it comes to D&D, probably the best way to explore, <laughs> ironically enough, isn't to do anything procedural at all. Just completely dispense with all of that stuff. Oh sure, the, to the tools are there if you need something to fill in the details, to get an idea as to the temperature, to get an idea as to the uh, environment and whatnot. But if you wish to... Uh, explore, or have your players explore if you are the DM, the best way to do that, I would say, if you don't want to go through the process of making a world yourself and manually placing things, is to grab a module. Grab a module with a map to explore, where the things are already placed, where the details are already there, where the story has been made. And then the players, dropping themselves into that world, not knowing the details yet, can start to piece them together, to ask for directions, to take hints, to observe the clues and the inferences that can be made from the world around them, piece together the picture, not just in their mind, in the group. Rebe Bodjo is probably the best way to explore, whether official, homebrew, whatever. Because then you're not rolling dice to see what's the temperature and how windy is it. You're rolling dice when it comes to dealing with the actual encounters, the challenges that you are there to face. And the same is true with video games too. If you're going to explore, the best exploration is probably going to come from something crafted for you to find. Because otherwise, the real world side of exploration is spending however many months on a ship travelling across the ocean hoping you'll find a continent or something different and calling it India because you're an idiot. It wasn't India. My ship's about to cook. I need them done. Rant over. Rant over. <laughs> I've been ranting for the last thousand light years. Rant over. I've never been there. I can't cast judgment on a place I've never been, really. I know things of India. I've spoken to people from India, but I don't know how to pass judgment otherwise. Let's uh, loop around another star. It's another scoopable one, so we'll get a little bit of fuel as we uh, wiggle around. We're going to have a quick uh, lucky loo. How far are we out? The route is 32 jumps. All right. We've done 20 of them, 32 to go. Yeah, I haven't been to 
the Americas either, though I've heard a lot more about the United States than I have about uh, India. Probably something to do with, uh, primarily speaking English, and the sheer social connection, cultural connection has led to uh, knowing so much more about the US. What are the gamers Civ? They would have a very high uh, cultural influence stat. Better or worse. I'm curious as to how much, you know, how many credits I'm going to get for the uh, discoveries we've had along the way here. Certainly the brand new discoveries. I'm hoping we get something sp shiny. That would be great. Alright, fair enough, Ladybug. You have yourself a good one. You'll be able to catch the rest of it on the replay, of course. You'll be able to see what comes of Esprit's Cake Planet. Alright, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, 31 jumps to go. Off we are to Amicus. Nearly halfway along this journey home. I hope so, Cosmo. I do hope so. I've not taken a very optimal route to this exploration. I've not been trying to turn it into a profit. I was looking for a different thing than pure profit. But it'd be nice to get that. Morning, I miss. Is it morning where you are? through this again. A little bit of scoopage action on the way. Just a bit of fuel as we swing past it there. And off we jump again. Yeah, it's currently about quarter past ten here. Currently about quarter past ten. One thing that's uh, kind of held to the side here, it's kind of sad because I feel like part of what these games with exploration could do, if they dared, is to try and include more, dare I say it, hand-holding and education. Rather than have you look outside of the game to figure out how smart the devs were, put it in the game. For example, stellar classification. I wonder how many of you here know anything about stellar classification. I wonder just how many of you know anything about that, really. I don't know a huge lot myself, but I know bits. About what? Stellar classification. The uh, ways to classify stars. Stellar meaning star. So as we jump over to this one, I will uh, bring up some information to show you there. Let's just uh, arrive at this very pink star. Very, very pink. No, nope, no, nope, it didn't look so pink in the end. Okay, maybe that's randomised. Good to know. So that's where we're at at the moment. And star class T Tori star. And we'll be jumping off next to a G white yellow star. That is the classification going on. But we have up here uh, G9 VAB and then G4 VB. So this is telling me that in that star system there, there are two stars. Both of them are G class. Uh, G9 and G4, I think 9 is lower luminosity. Good. Or is higher luminosity. There's, there's, there's a scale of 0 to 9, I think it is. I think that's luminosity. I'm really dragging my mind back from years and years ago of uh, le uh, learning this thoroughly dangerous because it was affecting where uh, you'd find terraformable planets within the so-called Goldilock zone. So there are different classifications of stars. Uh, you can get K, G, B, F, O, A, M, and then various others beyond that. Those ones I remember. Uh, it's a silly mnemonic or remembering phrase, KGB foam, which is the stars in Elite Dangerous which can be scooped. Those fit into the kind of the middle category of stars. 
And then outside of that are other stars which are a little bit more exotic and are not ones that you are able to scoop. Such as I say right now, we are at a uh, T type star. And that is not scoopable in this game. Just because of how they've done it. I don't think it is. If it's referring to this star here. Yeah. We're going around it, but it ain't scooping. You can hear the winds of it, but the scoop's not kicking in. And that that's a thing in this game. The, the whole stellar classifications is a thing. In fact, do I have on this tab... Uh, not there. Let me see if I can find this real quickly. Goldilocks zone, elite, dangerous. Chart. Perfect, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. Whilst we jump, let me just show you this. Boom. So right here, we have literally the Goldilocks zone chart. Someone put together... Oh, God, that's a massive zoom. Okay, we won't zoom in. So you can see here, right down at M, we've got the uh, much, much... Uh, let's see, yeah, much, much uh, cooler stars. Up to K, G, F, A, B, and O are hotter stars. These are ones that you can scoop. And this is in Elite Dangerous as well. And you can see then that the number, the hotter stars, have a lower number. There's a surface temperature. And that affects the habitable zones. So a M9 is much colder, whereas an M0 would be much hotter. And this is where you would find the habitable planets. The ones which could be terraformable and thus are worth the most to scan. All of this is in Elite Dangerous. All this exists there. So our sun, for example, is AG class. And sure enough, within that band is the Gold Rock Zone, which is where you'll find Earth. Because we are, what's it, 480 light seconds out, is it? No, wait, no. Yeah, 480, roughly, light seconds out. It's around about that. That pops in there, which fits in with our star. That's in the game. That is in the game. That is simulated. When a planet is determined to be terraformable, it's because it has the right conditions, including being in the uh, habitable zone. The sun is around K0? No, 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 no. I just said it was G-type. Uh, if we bring up the galaxy map, let's just quickly search Sol, because that's the name of our sun. You see ours is G2. I forget what the V stands for. That's another thing you can look into. If you want to know more about it. But yeah, star type G2 is our sun. We have a G-class star. Based on our stellar classification system we have. Oh, is it luminosity is Roman numerals? Okay. No. Sol is the name of our sun. Our sun is the sun. We call it Sol. We also call it the sun, but suns are suns. Our sun is the sun. We call it Sol. Hence, solar system. Solar system. <laughs> no. No. System scan complete. Now, all of that is in the game, in terms of the classification. That information is there. But there's no easy in to understanding that it's there. It doesn't really click or connect. You've got all of these bits and pieces, all this data filtering through. A lot of it is gunk, quite frankly, filler details. It is rolled dice. Rather than, hey, here's this thing called stellar classification. You can use it to interact with this other mechanic of the game. And then this thing can connect to that thing, which can connect to this thing, which can connect to that thing. Bubbly bibbly bubbly 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 and you have yourself a story, intrigue, things to think through and notice and discover and learn. But instead it's gunk. Instead it's gunk. So if I uh, open up here, If I uh, have a look at these bits and pieces here, we've got yeah, we've got the age, we've got 
Information, class F stars are white main sequence stars. They usually range in mass from 1 to 1.4 solar masses. They have a surface temperature of reaching 7,600K. Uh, this one does not reach that, but it's fine. So radius, solar masses, age, distance is just from where we are at the moment. It's got all this name. We got region, allegiance, population, government, state, economy, yada, 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 yada. All this information on the screen here. With the star type tucked over here just as another bit of gunk data and it's not gunk this bit here isn't gunk data but it's, it's just popped in with the rest let's like... say oh no no oh. so yeah not so good it what is solar mass? Uh, yes, it is exactly that, Cosmo. You figured it out. Mass relative to our sun. So our sun is exactly one solar mass. Other stars are measured in comparison to that. It's just an easy reference. Rather than saying so many kilos, which or tons, or megatons, or gigatons, which means nothing to anyone, really. A solar mass is a comprehensible unit. Because we have an idea as to our sun. It's worth very well put together. Yeah, that uh, infographic, I think, was only the scoopable stars I'd allow. So the idea was for that one, it's for people who are looking to explore and find terraformable planets and always have a star that they can scoop from. Because you don't want to be stuck without fuel. That sucks. But you're right, right. There are other classifications well beyond those. you got your neutron stars. You've got your uh, black holes. Which are <laughs> remnants of stars, I suppose. You've got your dwarves of various varieties and so on and so forth. You've learned more about science than your science class? There. Depending on what kind of school you're at. May or may not be surprised. I've, I've seen some of the teaching that others had and it's uh, it be a bit saddening. I was saying, welcome to a Ken stream, have my whole life you changed when you did stream. Was it really that much, Idle Outlaw? Was it really that much of an impact? I like to talk interesting topics and bring about, you know, I use some of the tidbits I've picked up in the last near 30 years on this planet, but, well. Yes, in all caps, okay. <laughs> Fair do. I hope for the positive, I hope for the better. What happened in Wednesday stream? I got philosophical. I got quite philosophical in Wednesday stream. Did you reevaluate a lot of things about existence? Like me. Again, I hope for the positive, I allow more. I really do. Truth and positivity. Two great things to have. Uh, Smuggler saying it was this exact game where a team rescued a dude stranded light years away with no fuel, right? Oh, yeah, many, 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 many times over. It didn't just happen once here. There is a whole community called the Fuel Rats. They will uh, be able to respond to people and try to guide people who have found themselves stranded one way or another. Maybe they have uh, run out of fuel. Maybe their cockpit has been uh, damaged and now they are venting atmosphere. That group will try to rescue people. They'll guide them through, give, give us the details, give us the location. We need this, this information. Log out now. Send it to us. Please don't log in again until we are there. Follow it up. Get to the person. Bring them the fuel. Connect up. Find that speck of a person in that solar system. Because even with that details, it's still connecting up. And yeah, there are some absolutely insane rescues that people have pulled off. Truly insane stuff. Bonkers, really. That's good, I thought. That is good. And yeah, you're absolutely right. You've caught a very important message there. But 
The results of just knowing something, of just being aware of something or seeing something, isn't in itself enough. Often the details, much like the gunk that we've got in these procedural uh, games, can be discarded. It's gunk. It is about understanding the right questions to ask and what you learn from those questions. Absolutely, yes. As our most remote rescue? Oh, there have been some bonkers rescues. Smuggler will probably have the details. Sounds like they've read about it recently. As, as, as a vague distance, I'd say, think about what sounds like a ridiculous length to go to to rescue someone in a video game. Double it and then you're probably correct. Like I say, they're bonkers. But good bonkers. They looked at a vast but somewhat shallow universe where you could do so many various bits and pieces and they decided of all the things they could do, they would load up their ship with extra fuel and go out to the people who ran out and help them get home. Now ain't that something. Ain't that something. Also, the temperature of my ship is something. Let's, uh, let's move away from that star now. We've got a bit more fuel. Safe to jump. Let's see, how many more jumps? 21 jumps. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Bit by bit. By bit. By bit. That's all. That's what she... <clears throat> nope. 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 That's a very white star on the approach. My word. I think this whole stream should have a one big flashbang warning. It occurs to me now. Three and a half hours in. You know, flashbang. Giant star approach, and that one is a bright one. Woo! You would certainly wake up in the morning if you lived near this star. Crikey. Graphics card not having to work very hard on rendering that star. Just put white pixels down part of the screen. Job done. Uh, what if you're down to fuel next to a sun? So long as you have a scoop and it's a suitable star, then you can scoop it and gather more fuel and off you go. If you do not have a fuel scoop or it is not a suitable star, then it's as bad as bad as being anywhere else, really. You are screwed. Try not to be screwed. They say, like, breaking down in the middle of a city, you can't just call the AA to come out to you and fix you up. I mean, you can't just call the fuel rats. <laughs> but if it weren't for the fuel rats, you'd be, you'd be screwed. Probably time the light should go and still open. Yeah, like, it may be summertime, but you know, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bit dark now, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely a bit dark now. You know, it'd be absolutely soul crushing. Just, just putting it out there. If it turns out that somehow someone else had discovered the same planet as me today and gets the information home first. The chances of that are literally astronomical. Literally. But could you imagine if I come back from exploring, finding a world that has never been found before and it turns out someone else is on the way home with that information already. I think that would be grounds for never playing this game again. That would be, well, we tried. We did our best. It was not enough. I would rather that not be the case. <laughs> Maybe that's why there's nothing that has been picked clean. Mm, doubt. Does that happen often? No. The odds are literally astronomical because that would require someone having travelled the route I travelled or in some way ended up at the same destination as me. Bear it in mind... Oh, button. 
bearing in mind the routes that I have taken, the squiggly wiggliness that I have gone through to get there and back, replicating that will be extremely difficult. Even if someone was stream sniping, the chance of them having any idea as to where I was going next to be able to figure out which planet I would end up on, nah. I would be more likely to win the lottery twice than have that happen most likely. Any idea how much this will pay? Not an idea at all. Nope. Could be terrible. Could be interesting. Uh, it's not going to be bonkers lots. Certainly it's not going to be a huge amount. But the actual amount? No idea. I do know this has not been efficient. So I am not holding out hope for anything great. But I would like to have something good rather than dismal or downright depressing. You know? Like... Gold item from a Radiant Relic home, not a uh, Legendary Core from a Sortie home. Enough digits to make it seem worthwhile. Especially considering the sheer travel time there and back. Like, after all this journeying, I can be fairly certain that Esprit and probably everyone watching this stream will have no intention of heading to that planet ever. Fair chance of that. That's how far out we are. You got surprise this week? Nicely done. You know, officially watching my stream in a blackout? What? When you say blackout, like power cut blackout, or just you decided to turn off all lights? Power cut, yikes. Not the fun thing. Let's do a bit more scooping here. Don't want the fuel to get silly. Power cut? Oh, damn. Well, I mean, at least you've still somehow got internet. That That's a positive. But two thirds of the way home. I'm just going to scoop for a bit here. Don't mind me. Bring in a cool 255 per second. The ship doesn't seem to be heating up, so uh, that's okay. We'll just coast here for a bit. Scoopy, scoopy. Once in every four seconds, there enough. Roasting in town, the next town over. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it seems to be a sweet spot. The power distributor is holding us nice and steady here. This ain't the fastest I could be scooping fuel. I could be scooping at 343 at my max, so I'm a bit, quite a chunk below the max here, but honestly, I'll take it. I'm just holding it. Oh, we got solar power back up as well. Oh, well. You're sorted then, Smuggler. You're sorted. I also have solar power. <laughs> or should I just consider it stellar power? This isn't Sol after all. That'll do. Let's continue onwards. Up, up, and away. Perfect. Sooner power? No, not sooner power. No, just no. No, 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 no. All right, jumping over to Freya Yugluk the sixth. Yeah, I think the the terminology has just been accepted as just solar power. I like, well, like photovoltaic is correct, yes, if you're doing photovoltaic. There's some other form of solar power. Sun power. But uh, I think the term has just become accepted. Our sun is sol. There are not other souls out there, it's just our soul. There are other suns. There are other stars. Only ours is Sol, but Solar, like other planetary systems, can be referred to as solar systems. It's kind of accepted in some circles. At the end of the day, much like we were talking about some Wednesday, it's still just describing a pattern. In the case of solar power, the pattern is gathering energy from a star directly. The star has emitted light, we pick up that light and turn it into usable power. That's solar power. 
term is just about the pattern. As long as people understand the pattern, they understand the term. Uh, one thing I do need to check before we get where we're going. Let me... I wonder if it's in here. No. I don't think it'd be in there. Never mind, it's not in there. Whatever I'm looking for, it's not in there. Um... Could be... I'll have a look in a sec. Uh, let's see. Box sensor, four crimes, got the inside. Flight checks, definitely know all those. Hyperspace speed throttle, yes. Cruises, creep mode. The light. Beaker, b -b 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 -b. Not, none of that is what I'm looking for. Where is it? Session log, finance, permits. Playlist. Hmm. I'm looking for something. I don't know if I'm actually looking in the right place at all for it. No. Is it up here? Uh, here we. This might be it. Nope. Nope, I was looking for something I didn't want to spoil, but I, I can't find it. So I'm just going to hope that I said it correctly. I'm just going to hope. Imagine if they really found a way to get power from nearby stars. <laughs> if we could get any meaningful power from nearby stars aside from our sun, we would not have to worry about energy ever again because we would have our sun. Trust me, you're fine. It does sound like that, Idol Alloy, yes. That, that has been a recurring meme since the birth of this game, absolutely. It is frame shift drive. The internet dying right now? That's rough. Hopefully it doesn't actually die for you, but that is rough. You've been hearing friendship the whole time. Oh, oh, that looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Look at that binary system. That sun's so close. In fact, if I have a look at this here, there, there, there's a, there's four stars in this system. Four stars here. Crikey. Let's loop around without crashing into either of them. Up from the jump. Just to make our way away from those ones. Don't mind me. Bye! <laughs> yeah, two pairs of uh, stars. Uh, Elite opens up. Where's that fly doing? Uh, Elite opens up a load of variety of options for uh, stars. Including having a system which can have like a dozen stars in it. Yeah, that's a thing. It's, uh, we, we don't ask how it works. We probably should, but it, it's a video game simulation, so, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Scoop ourselves around. Do a bit of Scooby Scoops. Grab some fuel as we get into position for the next jump. Cluster of stars, yeah, things like that. This one's a binary system as well, but the other star is all the way over there, 59,000 light seconds away. That's a lot shorter than light years, but uh, because of the way this game works, you jump to a primary star in a system, you can't jump to the other stars, and so it takes a lot of time to get to the other one. That, that'd be a bit of a way out. Imagine a system with 100 stars, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I would not want to be involved in any part of that, living, calculating, or what. 
Nope. That, that sounds like a mess, honestly. And if it was even remotely gravitationally stable, it wouldn't be for very long. I, I would be significantly concerned about the longevity of such a system. As to the formation as well, that would be, uh... Are you in the middle of a nebula or something? I'd be also concerned about the radiation from it all. That would, uh... That could be spicy. A bit gently. Yeah, try not to think too much about the, uh, the radiation of these black stars and what they should be doing to my ship. The risk of explosions and whatnot. Hello, Demoro. How are you doing? Let's see how many more jumps till we're home. Oh, can't find out just yet. We'll find out in a bit. Let's see how much more. Nine jumps. We're into single digits, chat. Single digits. You remember really dangerous good times? Ah, good, good. We're on our way back from a bit of an exploration trip. We found a planet for Esprit for his birthday. That four-star system would have ripped the ship apart? Not necessarily, no. I mean, we didn't even see physically two of the stars. They could be quite far away. Am I making a galactic core trek? Oh no, goodness no. No, th this is a, a single stream jaunt. Which has gone on a bit longer than intended because the uh, the bubble of exploration has expanded since I last did something like this. Quite substantially. On the way back home from a single trip out. We only went out about uh, two and a half thousand light years, I think it was. Need to reach Galactic Core in No Man's Sky? Do you even need to reach it? I looked into it and uh, I'll be honest, it doesn't entice me to continue. Like, what am I actually working towards here? Game Ansent, or rather the wikis and what that Ansent went, oh. Right. Okay. That's, uh, that, that happened. Or would happen, or could happen. Yeah. Let me say, you need to reach a new place to more framing SMMR. Yep. That's the way forwards. Do new things, get new things. Explore the game. What ship we in? This is a Diamondback Explorer. Fedu Idol, Adol. Fedu. I hope I have not diminished that for you. Hi, the cat's back. Hello. Apparently sniffing around at something. Probably determining how long she wants to rest there. Great then. Jump. Seven jumps to go. That's good, Hermes. Cat cam? No cat cam, no. She's in a different spot from where I had a cat cam that one time. She won't go back to the spot where the camera was there. She'd been there, going there for weeks. I said the cat cam. She doesn't go back there again. She does not like cameras. So do idle, yeah. Your experience is not too dissimilar to my own, actually. I got No Man's Sky uh, basically the day it came out. I didn't get it straight, straight away, but the initial reviews and what people were saying was looking positive. And so I, I let myself get swept up in the hype. I grabbed myself uh, the game. And it was an absolute bloody clusterfuck. It was it was a uh, an optimized nightmare. Is Elite worth starting as a brand new player? Watched some serious hours on YouTube, heard lots and lots of people complaining about some settlement bugs and whatnot. Is that in the sorts of fix as of now or what? Uh, I don't know about the settlements power procs because that is in Odyssey. I never actually bought the Odyssey expansion. I bought Elite Dangerous when it originally released and I bought the Horizons update uh, sometime after its uh, initial release. I never went ahead and purchased Odyssey. 
is where the settlement things are at. And from what I've looked into it, uh, maybe, maybe, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, really. For me, it doesn't sound like enough of my cup of tea to want to put the money into it. I am uh, not exactly flush with cash as a streamer. Yeah, Full-time content creation doesn't exactly overburden one with income. And so, uh, when it comes to Odyssey, I've, I've given that one a pass. But yeah, if you've uh, been watching hours on YouTube of the game, if you are enjoying what you're seeing here and you can re-watch uh, the streams I've done for Elite Dangerous, if that seems of interest to you, give it a whirl. Why not? And likewise, for those of you where it does not seem of interest, if you go, mm, okay, it was cool to watch, but uh, I'll pass on that, then pass on it. Perfectly fine too. Go with your gut vibes. And if you're not sure which gut vibe to make, figure out which questions you've got to answer yet. Have a think and find the questions in you that really matter. Uh, speaking of streaming, did I see how Twitch backpedaled super hard about the sponsorship changes they put in? Oh, believe me, I've been spending hours, hours going over the details, communicating with others in the industry to uh, make sure I was definitely on top of the information about the changes they were trying to introduce and how it's all been brought about, what they've done, what the future looks like, because, you know, it's, it's kind of a big part of my livelihood. It's kind of a big part of what I do here. So, yeah, I am all over the deeds. That's why we got the bot popping up frequently. Uh, you'll see stream moments as said just a moment ago, in fact. Twitch have removed the guarantee on the value of bits. Support the stream directly with an exclamation mark tip to avoid Twitch taking an arbitrary cut. Because in amongst all the other things, that was one of the many things that Twitch has done. They have removed the contractual guarantee that one bit spent on a stream is one US cent to the streamer. They changed that. Or rather, they just removed that information. Now it's just a portion of the fees. An undisclosed portion. Which, at this point in time, still seems to be the same portion. But the contractual value is gone. And they have not put any information anywhere as to what they intend to do with that. Or even what it actually is. So it could just silently change at any point. But yeah, fair question. Absolutely fair question. Like... After I spent hours going over everything that had changed, I did speak to someone else uh, who is a streamer, a partner streamer no less, and they were not aware of the changes at the time. But that was still very fresh into it, like hours since the release. I was going full on, figure out what the hell was happening. Oh look, there's another ship! You see on the scanner, that uh, rectangle with line below it just kind of swinging off into the distance. Should be somewhere up over there. There! There's another ship! It's an NPC ship flying off towards whatever's over there. That is our first indication of civilization in over three hours. You imagine some creators would not bother looking over it? Yeah, some people are either going to be just nowhere near as detail focused as myself, or certainly a lot of streams which are a lot smaller, where they just don't feel the need to pay attention and look into the details of what's being applied. In fact, everyone who streams on Twitch, whether we make money or not, are affected by the changes in some way. Yeah. No, I'm very unlikely to bump into another player, despite the fact I'm on open play. This is still a galaxy-wide game, and even within the habitable area, I am on the very edge of it. There's another NPC on my scanner right now. In fact, I think that's two NPCs. We'll kindly ignore them. And this next jump is to Amicus, the home system. We're nearly there, chat. We are nearly there. That ship is lining up behind me. I hope they're going somewhere else. That ship is definitely lining up behind me, but I am outpacing it, so it's fine. I don't need to worry about it. I was wondering why he was lining up behind me, but it's fine. It's going out. I'm, I'm gone, so it doesn't matter. Imagine we get into Dixie on doorstep of home. I mean, if the stream sniper was going to strike, it would be right now. <laughs> it would be right now. Oh my god, a lot of stuff is happening here.
はいレッツアップリングアセルズインヒアワイクナーノッオーバーライドディアトロールズ There we go Oh, I've overcooked it. Why was it fighting the controls on me? Come on. Oh, I've overcooked this, haven't I? Is it going to work? 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 I've overcooked it. The controls were locking up. They weren't doing what I was telling them to do. That's going to be somewhere in the settings again, isn't it? Bloody. Why did my SSD have to fail? Seriously. Yeah, whatever. Let's bring us in. Let's bring us in. A little bit of a loop of shame. I'm ahead saying, come over from YouTube. Love your Warframe videos. They're a huge help. You're very welcome, my dude. Glad you enjoy the videos. And uh, welcome into the Twitch channel. We are just wrapping up getting back to the station here. But we'll be on with more Warframe on Sunday. Uh, is this game bigger or smaller than No Man's Sky? Bigger. In terms of the sheer distance you can cover and what that represents, bigger. Uh, in terms of the gameplay you have access to, the question is uh, not one I can properly answer for you. Here we go. Hello, Mills Colony. Long time no see. What do I use for controller needy? I use mouse and keyboard. Ma manual docking go? <laughs> no. No. Uh, hot ass is hands on throttle and stick. It looks like that. Hands on throttle and stick. If I. If I don't get the menu, you'll see if I accelerate, I push the throttle forwards. No, I don't. Okay. I can't look there to properly show you because I have to drive. Fly. Here we go. Goes ourselves in. Uh, but yeah, hands on the roll stick, you see it there. Yeah, you get it. Right, contact Mills Conley, request docking. Let's bring ourselves in. For access, your assigned landing pad is number two. Wonderful. Landing pad number two one. On our way in. Everything you're gonna scan is the fact my ship is looking absolutely spanky. Sounds like there's someone very close to me, but I am a small ship, I should be able to just nip around in here. There we go. Docking pad is right there. Let's slow us down. Landing gear. Line her up a bit. And increase the velocity. It is very gingerly because I've got to be secure. Okay, not quite gingerly enough, apparently. There we are. Starport services. Let's see, after all of this traveling, what was it worth? What was it worth? Universal card graphics. Show me the good stuff. There's a lot of data for it to pick up, apparently. Give it a moment. Give it a moment. Alright then, cool. Alright, that's that's looking better than I was fearing. It's looking better than I was fearing. So this page of Discoveries Alone. Just a mix of things here. This page is worth 2.2 million credits. And now we get the next one. Waiting for it to load. And this page is worth another 1.4 million credits. Very nice. We'll pick up the little bits and pieces there. Thank you very much. And then the final bits and pieces. This page is worth another 500,000. Fair enough. Another 500,000. Let's pop that in as well. Now, my balance is at 267 million, so in terms of the uh, grand scheme of things, not that huge. But, first to discover that particular location. 10,000 credit bonus. Wasn't I first to discover two different star systems? I suppose the stars don't count, do they? The stars don't count. No, 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 it was two lots of planets. Well. 
There we are. That that's uh that 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 that's what they got me. That that's what they got me, yeah. And with that, we're home. We have uh, taken the stream pretty much bang on four hours rather than three. Lucky you. You get a little bit extra out of all that up there. I think that is going to do for the Elite Dangerous. Not just this stream, but I think I'm going to rotate this one out of the uh, Variety Friday pulp. So I'll have a think about what could take its place, if anything, on the poll for the next week and going forwards. Uh... After the real question, how hard is it for a brand new player to get into Elite Dangerous and start racking up big checks? And how much for time sink is it grinding us? Uh, how hard to get into? Not that hard. There are guides for basically everything out there. You can certainly get onto it. Grinding us, it's grindy. It's grindy. Yes. Time will be spent uh, accruing the bits and pieces to go through the motions to get the next thing, to get the next thing, to get the next thing, to move, 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 move. Yes. Uh, how much grind you engage with is your choice, but there are certain amounts necessary to reach the uh, the moderate stuff. Is it less grind than Warframe or Eve? Um, it depends on what you're looking to get. I would say to get to where I am, to the things I've been using, and uh, that's across all three streams, I would say filling up a decent chunk of the Warframe arsenal in terms of the number of Warframes. Not all of it, but a decent chunk of it. But that's just the Warframe side. Not the actual progression to get there and yada. Not the resource gathering for the endo. Just the actual grind of like half or so of the Warframes would be about the same kind of time to get to where I am at. But that's if you're trying to enjoy the process along the way. If you go hardcore, I'm doing just this, then pro yeah, probably half that time again, yeah. But I don't know how enjoyable that would be necessarily min-maxing the absolute loving hell out of it. But yeah. Is there a simulator green that's not grindy? <laughs> Life is slow. Life is slow. Well, Lolljack, uh, very nice that you've found me here from YouTube. Unfortunately, you've come in at uh, a little bit of the wrong time. There I say it. Good to be over here all the same. But this is where we are wrapping up, as I've been streaming now for four hours, when I normally only stream for three, so lucky y'all. That is where we're going to wrap it up, though. Thank you very much for everyone who's joining in, and especially those of you who have stuck with me the entire ride home from far out into the distance, where we found Esprit's wonderful, wonderful new cake planet. I'll see you guys again on Sunday for some more good old Warframe. In the meantime, you enjoy your weekend. You have yourself the very, very best time, wherever you are around the world. And take care. Bye, Wild Tannos. Bye-bye.